Born ready. It's Wednesday. Yep. Time for your favorite podcaster's favorite podcast. Let's go. Dang. Hey. Dang. 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 Rest in peace, Dang. Young Dolph. Dang. Get paid. Dang. Hey, he was really preaching on this song. Young Dolph was preaching on this. We're going to do it just like this. What's up, family? It's your boy, Elders. You are tuning to the Just Elders podcast, the hottest podcast to ever hit the airwaves. I'm super excited. I'm about to record the greatest episode I have ever recorded. I say it every time, and I mean it every single time. Feeling like the paparazzi on me and this motherfucker. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Man, good round of applause, round of applause. Thank you for everybody that tuned in last week's episode. The HBCU made episode. I realized something, Keith. What's uh, that? What's that? Two subjects I can't talk about. Two subjects I get quiet on. Music and college. <laughs> dang, dang, dang. <laughs> <You know what's laughs> I, be, I be wanting to relate I be, Oh man I be wanting to relate For those that don't know I didn't go to college uh, And don't listen to music Well you know well, Let me say Let me say 80s, You know like, He's he been catching uh, no, up no. on music lately Okay L- uh, Lately no. Since no. we started the pod He's been on more current shit I, I, He's, I he's been, surprised us a couple times I agree But what threw yeah. me off Is he, he stopped the song Before it went through Rule number one don't forget to get the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rule number two. But that's because I ain't know it. <laughs> but I know I remember you preaching, but I ain't know when it was gonna Which drop. Part? Okay, all right. right. So that's that. But two, really, I kind of fall off early two thousands on the music tip. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, Lil, yeah. Lil, <laughs> exactly. Lil Wayne dedication too. Okay. Like I remember that shit. I remember that nigga was. That's when Wayne was doing something different from the hood. Like that's when we used to get our music from the gas station mm-hmm. or the barbershop. Barbershop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like when Keith had a mixtape. Hey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. You know I don't be thinking Keith lying, but it'd be funny just hearing folks say Keith used to do shit that involved people. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, old man Damn. Keith. <laughs> old man Keith don't like people. So just to know that Keith was like the mixtape nigga, like. That's I mean, funny. I still I still didn't fuck with people. It was number two of us. You know, crew similar to this, three niggas. All you need is shout three. Out, shout out to Marquise and Carvon. All you, you need, need, you need is three. All you need is three. All you need is three. Three is a crowd. Nah, man. Um, uh, I'm I'm excited, man. It's gonna be a good episode. First of all, it's good to see y'all, brothers. Y'all look good, man. Y'all look healthy. Y'all look like y'all drinking water. Right. Look like y'all loving your kids. Look like you loving yeah. your women. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> y'all look y'all look good, man. I yeah, just want to say that. Hey, good to be it, back, bro. man. We in this thing, bro. Yeah, yeah that's a fact. Bro, feel bro. good. Let, me, let bro. me tell y'all, like, I I feel real good. I feel real good. I'm on some. Um, I just feel like um, I know I'm on a new level. In life, because you know how you do something, it's kind of like learning a new move in basketball or learning a new flip as a gymnast. The first time you do it, you super hype, and then you just do it. Mm. Like going super saying. Right, <laughs> right. No, I was trying to keep it relevant for all of us, but for those that know, they they, they know by now. Right, yeah, that you know, the, the, other, the other half. Every other shot, half. every shot of them fuck with one nigga. Right. <laughs> Right. Well, every nigga don't fuck with one shot. Right. <laughs> they know some shit about Super Saiyan. Right. So, um, yeah, man. Um, first of all, you know, I gotta give flowers to Keith. Uh, uh-uh, real fast. <laughs> this nigga would clap for us. Right, so, uh, go Keith. Now, now, let me say that because what y'all don't know, we we did release episodes, but currently all of the shows except one are uh, pure audio. And I know we're doing a lot when I'm. I'm a playback guy. I go back and listen to the playback of my episode, and I've been busy, but I'm looking like, dang, I'm two episodes behind on Cool and Conscious. Dang. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm hell, Simply Paulette just dropped on yeah. Sunday, the day. Yeah. Uh, right, so, out, shout out, shout out. Keith, you working, bro, like, like for real, for mm-hmm. real. And, and in the audio, Keith ain't just 
turning the mic on, turning it off. Right. If you listen to it, he's he's an artist with this yeah, shit. Them sound effects is crazy, dog. Yeah, yeah like he's an art. Like crazy. he's he's bringing it to life. Yeah. He is he is giving us a audible 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 experience yeah. experience. Yeah. And um, then I was just thinking the other day because um, I did a video for um, um, Atlanta Voice mm. newspaper. Um, they were promoting their Giving Tuesday. Most people don't know that Atlanta Voice is a nonprofit. No, see, I did not know that. I ain't see? know that. So they're a nonprofit, and they have been telling our stories for years. Yeah, matter of yeah. fact, let's clip this. Uh, so November thirtieth is um, it is uh, Giving Tuesday. And Atlanta Voice is one of our black-owned, uncompromised, you know, unbought, unboss uh, media outlets where they will tell the stories in a way that's culturally relevant to us. Mm -hmm. And to know that we could give $5, $10, $100, $1,000 to help them on this Tuesday, I'm challenging everybody to do that. Um, Please support this institution. Yeah, tax deductible. Yeah. So, so Troy, I, I, they shared it on their stories, and Troy, I shared it on my stories, and Troy texted me, he screenshot it, and they put on there, they were like, Eldridge is a media professional, and then me and Troy just started laughing, because he was like, man, it's crazy to see a plan work, you know what I'm saying, like a rebrand, watch the process of a rebrand, you know what I'm saying, that's been cool, like going from that to, let's try a podcast to... I think we do five. You know what I'm saying? So when I say I feel good and I know I'm on another level, like now nah, we 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 really produce five dope podcasts. And um not enough people know that yet. And they will know soon enough, but the hard part is being done. Spreading the word is easy. Mm-hmm. Creating it, executing it. So I'm just saying, when I say I feel good, I feel good because like I'm like, dang, we ready, <laughs> born ready, <laughs> like straight up. That's hard. Straight up. No, so that's dope. That's dope. Yeah. That's so dope. I just had I just had to get uh, cause you you definitely edited. I don't even be like we came in today. Me and Mark came in. Keep recording. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I was surprised. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, surprised to that. You know what I'm saying? Hell out of me, though. It's so cute. Hey, Mark really looks surprised. <laughs> Look, cause y'all gotta know when I get here. Yeah, Mark normally the first one here. Keith don't I, be. Yeah, sometimes E don't be here, and bro. I live here. <laughs> sometimes E don't be here. So. I'm the I'm the parks of this studio, bro. and I be lazy. For time, me so. to get here and Keith set up in his bit. They not like, set up. No, nah, he's, he's finished. He's finished recording an episode. I'm like, Damn, so many he was here for an hour. So just I man, I, I thank y'all. Uh I started off with Key, but I just thank the team. Um, I thank the listeners, the people that's been supporting, cause you know, Troy is one of those people that's been watching from the beginning. There's oh, yeah. there's other listeners that have been like, I say this and I move on. At the gathering spot, kicking it, and uh I see somebody I know and we say what's up and I'm like, I introduced Troy. I'm like, yeah, this that's true. And she was like, No, no, I didn't even introduce him. He said, Hey, how you doing? And then she said, You're Troy. And she like, I recognize from your voice. I swear to God, you called you called Troy right now. That's you. I would hey, not play. Because of Troy <laughs> so, from the podcast. So, hey, so that nigga Troy said, I'm about to put in my Instagram bio, uh, just Eldred adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, go so, ahead, my nigga. Like you know, that. just to know that people like and it every like people be like, yeah, nigga, I listen to the podcast, but they be wondering why I'm so surprised because what y'all don't realize on the back end, we just see numbers. Yeah, you see people listening, but it's just numbers. So when you put like a face and a personality, and then people that I know are busy and they got a lot of shit to do, to know that they, oh yeah, I, I listen to this shit every week. Nigga, that's major for me. So thank you. Everybody appreciate it. Um, I want to dive right in because we got a lot to talk about. A um, little serious topic. Rest in peace to Young Dolph. Hey. Um, moment of silence. Please, moment of silence. I do want to say, um, even the fact that Keith just turned off the mics and the white noise went away. That's an audible experience. <laughs> it's a fact. 
Because if but, he wouldn't have did it now, he would have did it in post. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Happened, no matter what. So, moment of silence, uh, the young Dolph, man, I hate it. And, and I, Keith, I'll let you tee it up and we can just kind of get into this. Uh, but yeah, we man. starting off just condolences to him, his family, his people, everybody, his fans, Absolutely. condolences. Absolutely. I mean, y'all seen the story, man. I mean, uh, young Dolph from Tennessee in his area, back home in Memphis, went to get his mama some cookies right before his annual turkey drive. That's all it was. Going to get my mama some cookies. Uh, Black-owned business at that. Mm -hmm. Uh, A business that everybody knows. Black women-owned business. Black women-owned and a business that he has been promoting for a while. Everybody knows when he come in town, then the place he's going to get his cookies. It's like how we promote black. Right. Everybody knows we're going to get some food. We're going down the street. Floyd Plaza. So... He's there. Uh, some goons pull up. From some reports, they say Dolph did try to get some shots back. But if you see the uh, pictures of the guys with the gun, they had some heavy artillery. Right. Yeah. And they yeah, shot it one up. One of them had a little banana clip on yeah, it, whatever they, they, wow. they shot it up. And it was strictly on some hit stuff because they didn't take nothing. They left the car. They didn't take right. nothing off of him. It's like they hit him and dip. So, uh, yeah, man, it's like RIP now. Uh, rumors and all that, you know, it's, it's not – Unknown that he has beef. It's not unknown that he's been shot at a hundred times. Yeah. There's a whole song about it. Um, he was shot at a hundred times, straight up. Beef with Yo Gotti. Uh, Soldier Boy said some crazy shit earlier this week, printed some stuff out on him. So, you know, um, it, it just goes back to another rapper killed back home. Man, let's see. When you say rapper, I say I'm with you because I'm with you on everything, right? But here's where it hit home to me. I heard his the, the 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 statement from his wife, from his kid's mom. She said, "How am I going to tell my kids that?" So I don't look at him as a rapper. I look at him as as a black father. Right. Like this is a black father, bro. Right. Like y'all just took somebody who rumors reporting saying he used to buy his kids a home every birthday. Yeah, a pro- piece of property. Every Yo, birthday. that's generational wealth. He used to do so much for the community. He used to do so much for the people that kill. It's the Nipsey story. Right. It's the same thing, bro. I, I get so sick and tired of it. And I understand, like, you know what I'm saying? The streets is the streets. So you got to respect the streets. And your karma don't got no, uh, 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 um, you know, time period. It come back whenever it come back. Yeah. But at the same time, man, we just. What do you mean when you say we got to respect the, street, the streets? Well, the streets are the streets. I think the streets are as, as um, you know. Solid and as as you know as ground as the is gravity, bro. We we know the streets and we know what they produce and what 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 happens in the streets. And either you're gonna stay away from it, or you got to live w- within those rules of the streets. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. the men that ha- we we've lost or whatever, you know, due to the, this gun violence and shit like that, is they living in the streets, man. And it's just mm-hmm. that's just a part of some of the rules. Right. That's just a part of some of the rules. Um. Mowley tells a story and he was talking about his uh somebody he know from Chicago, big uh street move. I can't even remember his name, but he was in a barbershop getting a haircut. Mm. And um the dude uh dude came in a barbershop, ran in, like, yo, your man's who like his best friend, equivalent to like if one of y'all, your man just got locked up. He got locked up, dude was like expecting to get some reaction. He was like, he was like, man, keep going. He just cutting his hair and he was like, everybody get got. That's just the rules. And then you think about um two pot thug life, thug life rules. You gonna do one or two things. In the rule, in the in the laws of thug life, it says you're probably gonna get locked up. Probably going to get killed. And I remember at one time in my life, I was like infatuated with that shit. I tell niggas all the time, 50 Cent got me locked up. Like, I mean that shit. Dang, dang, (laughs) Nigga, when 50 Cent say two niggas in the front, two niggas in the back, there's four niggas scrapped up in my grandpa Cadillac. Nigga, it was my sister Pontiac. (laughs) Like, like... I was in like I was infatuated with the streets. I, I, I didn't come from the street. Both my parents educated. Both my parents grew. Uh, we was in the church. 
but I was infatuated. So it's a lot of niggas that's infatuated with this shit. They they make it seem so sexy, bro. Like they make through it entertainment, se- through movies, through shows, through rap, they, they make, make it seem so sexy. So bro. my question to y'all is for us to change the paradigm or to change the um for us to change the reality of what's happening, because we nobody's happy with it. Seeing Nip, it was a big deal. It was hurt. Mm. Seeing Young Dolph, big deal. Niggas hurt. What's the level of sacrifice or what's the level of effort that has to come from our generation to change this? Or can it not be changed? Nah, and if bro. it can't be changed, why are we surprised? <clears throat> it's the music, man. It's the music. I, I, uh, me and my girls were out the other day, and I got this new uh, playlist I follow on Apple Music. I think, I'm glad you said it, but I'm going to go. But I've said this a few times on this podcast. You, you said it, but and you said it, but it. I never heard. Okay, so me and my girl riding. I got this playlist on Apple. It's called I forgot what it's called, but it's basically all the new young nigga rap, right? And yeah. I'm trying to still trying to stay relevant. I got kids. Yeah, it's hits. Know. It's like if you look at rap hits, it's most. No, no, it's not even that. It's like the up and coming shit. It's like the oh, okay. some of the stuff you might hear on TikTok. Um, bunch of young niggas you don't know. Forty two does it's a bunch of, but people that I know, my son might listen to, right. and you know other kids. But every, you know how when we grew up in the era of Young Jeezy, Trap or Die, Fifty Cent. So it was more of that we're gonna trap, we're gonna hustle, we might rob, but it wasn't a lot of killing, killing, killing. This generation. Every song, I got the strap on me. I'm killing a nigga. I'm busting off his T.O.P. I'm, you know, all, like everything is about killing. Like nobody's even, we heard Young Jeezy. He was talking about, you know, sacking up dope and all that. That kind of influenced, because I thought about it. And I told my girl, I said, I, I ain't going to lie. I remember Young Jeezy, how 50 Cent got you locked up. Young Jeezy got me and my boys to go buy a sem. And you know, a sem ain't shit. And sack it up because at, at the grocery store they used to sell the baggies right there in the store. Like they was right mm-hmm. there in the front. And we listening to Jeezy and we were like, you know what? We can put it in here and say it's five dollars. Right? Five dollars. And we did it and felt no like <laughs> Boy, you showing your age, dog. You showing your age. Bro. I did, they I only, did just hey, look, they don't even make them no more. Like, <laughs> look, we, you can't go we, nowhere we, and find we, a nickel we bag. We bro. just <laughs> talking about we just talking about just talking about this. Look. <laughs> So I got somebody, I ain't gonna say what it is. Yeah. Someone in my life older. And they were talking about how like shit, man, I need to get, I probably need to go smoke something got they that help supplement this medication. Yeah. He said, damn, he said, you can't even buy nothing less than a 50 now. I, I'm looking for a nickel bag. I said, man, I know you ain't smoked a long time. Oh, Jesus. Man, I said, man, some old but they ain't that old. But Jeezy had us with even wanting to try and feel like this could be a means just, to it. I'm end. sorry, I need a hey, so. scream man, scream man, scream man. I need scream man to go find how many times I done had this conversation on this podcast. But you said it, but I didn't hear it let until me, I heard like so many songs back to back. Let me interject though, bro. Cause it's that, but that's a product of poverty. That's a product of it is. This way I gotta do Hold on, wait, wait. Let me right. let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. All right. Because for one, this is systemic. The reason why we are in these in close environments, the reason why none of us got money, that's all systemic. And we know the history behind that. All of us are well versed in that. But here's something else that's important. When young Jeezy and them was out, the reason why that was working is because Jeezy was independent for a long time. He was putting out his own music. And then when he did get picked up by a major, that's what niggas was listening to. Right now, what niggas want to hear is that kill, 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 kill shit. So... If I'm a young nigga and I know that I can either make kill shit or I can make fun, Will Smith, hip hop, whatever shit, I'm going to make kill shit even if I'm not doing that. So the reason why they're making that music is because these labels are opening the floodgates and saying, yo, make more of this shit, continue to do more of this shit, and we'll continue to give you more money so you can kill more of your people. I hear your point. And I'm going to say this. I don't think it's poverty. I think it's the love of money. It's not poverty when you got... What's this? So you should bop your head. Hundred racks on a drop, pull up on a block, popping at the ops. Caught a nigga with his bitch slipping at the light. He got in his top. I mean, it's kind of my point, bro. Right. Like, but look, but look, but this is this is what I'm saying. It's the love of money, cause you got niggas killing folk, and then the police find them in their mama house in Gwinnett County. 
Like, <laughs> nigga, you not coming. Nobody coming from the bottom but, but, no more. And, and, and let me and let me go even further uh, because uh, it's a mix. It's a mix look, of what you saying and what Mark saying. Look, but all right, I, I hear you. But I also want to push back on what you said about because we were talking about this on the way. We just did a road trip to uh, North Carolina, and I was like, we have to understand. We have to sacrifice and change what we listen to. Change our diet. It's almost like changing your diet of food. We literally have to change our diet of entertainment. And and if we don't do that, it's going to decay us. Like f- bad food would decay your body. It's decaying our mind. What we got to realize, when I'm not rapping about guns, when I'm not rapping about killing drugs and all that shit, I'm Kanye West. That's what the first time we... That's why Kanye West really hit me. Because I remember Kanye came out with College Dropout, and that nigga was literally mainstream with every other nigga up there, and he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to talk about that gun shit. He had to talk about that killing shit. And that's why he might be the richest nigga. Uh, what the fuck? Yeah, let's use it. It's, it's overheated. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but... um. I do think people are coming from poverty. I do feel like that. But I do know that, like you said, there are labels that are only paying you if you talk about this. Yeah. And because we have no, we no longer check. Like back in the day, there used to be a level of, nigga, you did that shit for money. Mm-hmm. You trash. That, there you go. Now, we can, we can agree now that's no longer there. Now we be like, shit, that boy get in the bag. I agree. Like it's a reason why the nigga that snitched on um on uh I am a revolutionary. What's his name? Um Fred Hampton. Hampton. It's a reason why the nigga that snitched on Fred Hampton, the day after they released the documentary and he told how much money he got, that nigga killed himself. Mm -hmm. He killed himself. And he made back then he was making hundreds of thousands of dollars. So what I'm saying is now we only validate through money. We don't validate through morals. We don't validate through principles. We don't validate through honor. We validate through money. Oh, that nigga getting a check though. And we until we remove the power of money, <clears throat> this shit gonna keep happening. And you know, see, to add to that, that's still systemic though. And the reason why we don't have morals is because we don't have them OGs. The reason why we don't have them OGs is once again. Systemic shit, systemic racism. Them pulling them off the streets, them removing them from the house, them saying you don't have anybody to look up to. You need to look at us for money. And so these young boys and these young girls is like, yo, I need to go find this white man to pay me some shit because that's the only way I'm gonna do anything. And the only way they paying me is if I talk about I, only reason, only reason, only, mm-hmm. and I want you to go. Only reason I gotta push back on that <clears throat> because most of the OGs you need to know ain't no flashy. This how much money I got. We just lost a legend, bro. Michael Langford, rest in peace to this this dude. And I got to go here for a second. Moment of silence for Michael Langford, man. Bro, gotta moment of silence. Man. Like, that was My, a tough one. Yeah, nah, for real. Michael Langford. Like, when I say this dude believed in me, bro. Like, Keith would tell you, like, I mean, he hired Keith because I asked him. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's off the strength. Mm-hmm. It's like, off the strength. Like, Michael Langford, you know how many people don't even know who this is? And he runs Joyland. He runs Southwest Atlanta. Hell, Langford Parkway is named after his fucking brother. You know how many niggas Langford don't know? Langford Park. Huh? Langford Park. The length of... Uh, the uh, Arthur Langford Community Center. There's a community center. There's a mirror. There's a street. There's a uh, highway. All named after this brother and his brother. And you know how many niggas don't know who that is? How many people in that hood? And it's not because you couldn't get access to him. The most accessible dude out there. So people see th- his funeral is coming up. When you got four former mayors coming to speak at your funeral. When you got pastors arguing, well, not necessarily arguing, but all fighting for the chance to speak or host your funeral at their church, you're a legend, bro. But Langford had, Langford 
He ain't got down around bragging on how much money he got, but I know he got it. Hell, he done loaned me money before. So what I'm saying is, what these young niggas got to do, this young generation, they got to do a better job at seeking mentorship and leadership that don't look like this street shit. And that's the issue. No, and, and it's the issue. And I, and I think the issue, y'all are both hitting it on the head, but it stops at a certain point, right? You're right about the OGs, but what also has happened, and you have to admit, a lot, of, and, and this is why I respect Mr. Langford so much, Derek Bozeman so much. These are OGs in the political space who I know have not sold out black people, right? Yeah. Who I know stood for black people. When they got to the table, they stood on their morals. But it's a lot of older black people that who ain't. did not do that. So this generation does not respect them. When they came out in Ferguson, that was their first taste of, we don't respect you old niggas. Because right. y'all been selling this out. So you're right, but that's where they stopped. Right. Now, Mark is right, too, about the poverty, but it's, no so much, it's not so much as the poverty as so much as the economy and the inflation rate right now, right? Because like El just said, these young niggas getting caught in Gwinnett. It was some young niggas that caught in Milton. Bro, that's a good I, baby girls just played a, a, a game out there. They have two gyms at the high school. My school did not have that, but it's happening because the hundred dollar bill is the new twenty, and these kids can get access to the money like we used to because older people need to work at McDonald's. They need to work at Popeyes. They yeah, need to work at yeah. you know what I'm saying. And that's and true. That's now, now, that. now, and, 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 lot, and if yeah. and if I'm around a bunch of OGs who are getting some paper, like my older cousins yeah. is getting some paper, but I I don't have access, and this young, young nigga has access. I'm taking one, two. I know that the way this justice system is set up, I'm under 18. I can get away with a couple of shots. I do a year or two and I'm out and I'm big boy, just like the other young OGs, because you don't have these older OGs. You don't have niggas in their thirties and forties yeah. that they'll listen to. These yeah. niggas, is, you Nipsey have 16 year olds. Man, no, you no. even younger than that, you have 16 year olds listening to 17 year olds right. thinking that they're OG because they came from juvenile. Nah, yeah, and did a year. yeah, OG, OG status <laughs> because, has because, up. because I got, got down, I broke into a goddamn house with a damn 50 inch <laughs> and I walked down <laughs> yeah. the street. Right <laughs> down, these niggas didn't even see me. Check. I threw that shit in the car and I shot the police like, yeah. fuck, fuck, fuck. Bro, you know what I'm talking about. I, right? I, I, I mean, because OG used to be after 21. Honestly, after 21, you was considered to be an OG. Most niggas mm-hmm. don't make it to 21. You feel me? Like, in that sense, right? In yeah. that environment. So, and, but now it's like 17, 18. So, yeah. So, 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 so that's where y'all, that's where it meets, right? It's not so much as poverty because niggas is getting money, but that younger generation don't have access to the money. It's as big as of a divide we feel like it is for us at like 30s and older, upper 20s. Like, damn, this person is doing this, this person doing that. Imagine being a 15, 16, 17 year old mm-hmm. looking on IG and some of these 15, 16, 17 year olds have cars and investing in Bitcoin and starting businesses and getting to the paper. And yeah, I live in Gwinnett, but my mama paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is a big house. And yeah, it might be worth 100000 but her whole check is going to all That's the true. shit that we're doing. So I don't have extra access. But what I do know and what I could get access to is doing a quick lick. I'm under 18. Right. I ain't going to do no hard, hard time. And that scam and shit. And that scam and shit. So that's I was where it meets because they don't listen to the OGs mm-hmm. and they're not as broke as we think they are. But I think that. But they are because all they doing is as they as we move up, they're making a the dollar worth less. So it's like we can make more dollars, but it worth less and less and less. So it's still the same poverty I, shit that I, I we've think, been I think to answer, through, so. I think to answer the question, I mean, going to what you're saying, it really falls on. And you talk about this a lot, too education it's the education i don't care about how broke you are these kids have more access they have more education but it's about what you're what you're focusing on i can listen to some music and be like oh damn they're talking about scamming and then these kids are going a deep dive on scamming and figure out how to do some quick scamming shit versus learning the mechanics of bitcoin learning the mechanics of you know interest and all that and they're going money in they're going so deep that i was talking to a young cat about this scamming stuff and they were just telling me how he was just telling me how you do it, how you go in there and you, like, it's somebody working at the store. As soon as you swiping your card, they taking that code and they selling it online. Yeah. And then now you got access to their whole account. And they like, they they logic is the money insured anyway. So they ain't got, you ain't taking from them. You only taking away from them temporarily. Exactly. Like, he broke down the whole, bro, he broke that thing down so me so sophisticated. I'm like, you can, you can get me one? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like, golly. So 
you know, this scamming shit is uh, going back to what you said, Keith. It's the music. Entertainment culture has to take a level of responsibility. Just like community people, I always say this: we got to do a better job at making the non-scammer, non-crime life look more sexy, and we got to make it look more accessible by giving more mentorship, more opportunities, more program. We got to do our job, but y'all got to do y'all job too, because y'all around here yelling at everybody talking about, "Oh, stop killing, stop doing this." But we glorifying it, bro. I remember we just played 21 Savage verse. We just played it. The very thing that 21 Savage said he do. I ain't participating in that squash shit. All we believe in homicide. Swinging that case side to side. Sending teddy bears to the mama house every time. Make her cry. That's what's happening right now. We like, damn, we need to stop the violence. But when that shit came out, we like, woo. Wait, 21, that nigga want that 21. <laughs> like, come on, bro. It, nah, that's a fact. What you speaking on is real. It, it hit harder when it's one of the people that we like and revere, but it's the same shit. Like, you, it's it's the streets. It's going back to that point. Like, it's the streets. Like, it's the streets. So, the streets is the streets is the streets. We so, just know Dolph. Right. We just don't know the other nigga that was named Jermaine that lived the same way as Dolph or damn near that way. He had a whole bunch of money, a whole bunch of this. We just ain't known because he wasn't a rapper. And and I'll go here and I'll wrap this up. Like, it goes back to us. Keith said of education, but education of who we are as a people. Mm-hmm. And when you educate yourself as a people, you relate more to your people. You love your people. You have more empathy for your people. So now I care about this shit if his name is Jermaine right. or his name is Young Dolph because I'm not looking at him as a celebrity versus a regular nigga. I'm looking at him as a black man who was my brother, who was my father, who was my sister, who was my mother. And we all are connected. Now I feel that shit. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Bring back and, the black man. And and we got to do that. And if we don't do that, so I will end it here, man. Rest in peace to Young Dolph. But as a culture, as an entertainment, we got to change our diet. And if we don't change our diet, we're going to keep getting these chronic diseases. Mm. This was a chronic disease. I, I want to play something because... It's ironic that that happened around the same time I found this clip that I kind of lived my life this way already, but it kind of talks about everything we're talking about and how we get in these conditions. It's from um, Brother Neely Fuller Jr. Uh, You said black people need to stay away from each other. Since you brought up black people in your last statement, um, why did you say that black people need to stay away from each other unless there's going to be some productivity? Yes. Black people should stay away from each other because as victims of racism, the racists have filled our minds full of poison. So whenever we come in contact with each other, the poison immediately begins to spread. Mm. Black people walk around full of poison. You can almost see it in our eyes. When we pass each other on the sidewalks, we're loaded with it. It's been put there. We weren't born with it. We didn't have that look in our eyes when we were little people, just little toddlers. We were wide open to the world, just like all people are when you're a toddler. But when you are in an evil system, a system that is designed deliberately to produce evil thoughts, to produce animosity, to produce violence. That's not his audio experience. And that toddler, as he or she grows, begins to pick up the poison that's that's already here. That's real. And then the poison is spread as that person comes in contact, particularly with persons of like persuasion. This is why black people sitting on a bus, you can almost feel the atmosphere of hostility there. That's not a natural thing. That's artificial. And it's all put there by the white supremacists long before the bus was built long before the people got on the bus. Every black person must realize this. So what do you do about it? Codification is all about what you do. You make sure that anything that you say to someone before you open your mouth is of constructive value. Anything that you do with someone, you sit down and plan it first. 
and make sure that what you're planning is of constructive value. Yeah. So is yeah, education nah, yeah. coming together on some constructive shit and he, teaching young people that. He said it though. He was like, you know, you ain't born into that. I mean, you're not born that way. You just yeah, raised that yeah. way. It's like, but you said changing your diet. And what immediately came to my head is like, that's hard when you're being force fed. If you can't go find, if you're in a food desert and I only got a McDonald's and a Wendy's here, that's what I got to eat. Yeah. So if I'm on Apple Music and I only got McDonald's, Wendy's, and Popeye's, I got to I gotta consume that. But it's also, like I said, it's the principle of no better, do better. Like, most people don't really understand the effects of what McDonald's are doing to their body. Mm. I remember that documentary came out. Um, Super Size Me. Yeah, Super Size Me yeah. fucked up a lot of people. Boy. It, it fucked up a lot of people because it really broke down the science of what this shit is doing. 13th documentary came mm-hmm. out, fucked up a lot of people, showed the science of what the uh, criminal system is doing. Mm-hmm. So education is going to goddamn break down the science of what's really happening to us. You know what I mean? But there's two levels of education. I can educate you on how bad this is, mm-hmm. but I can also educate you on how good you are. Mm-hmm. And when I do that, that kind of makes you dive into all the other spectrums right. of who you are. Which is dope. Because I think about this a lot when it comes to censored. And it's like, how do you get Shout people out to, to be- too. Yeah. Thank you, bro. But like, how do Don't you get- call it a comeback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, no, but it is, though, for sure. And offline, I got to talk to you about some other things. But um, I think about that. How do you get it to be sexy? Because the knowledge is what we need. But we also have to be receptive to that. And we got to think about who we're talking to. So it's like really backward strategy on your audience to say, how do we get these young niggas that only have seen this, this, and that? How do we get them to listen to something different? And like you said, it's not telling them how bad it is. It's telling them how good you are. Okay. I think that's a gem. You uh, know what I mean? That that part. And uh, yeah, I like that. And that <laughs> part. And, and I don't know if we're going to go here now, but I mean... It kind of falls on what we was gonna talk about because you say how can you do it? Mm-hmm. You can write a seventy-two page plan and make sure these kids ain't doing nothing but goddamn working and staying in the house and Se- they, King. and they ain't watch Se- no TV. Cause Se- like, King. disclaimer, disclaimer. <laughs> like if you ain't seen the movie, don't watch this. Spoiler shit. alert. So, spoiler uh, alert. By, by the time Richards. it's come out, y'all have seen the scene. Nah, alert. because I'm waiting till Thanksgiving. My, my whole family watching together on Thanksgiving. Gotcha. So like, I might watch it again. That's the only reason I ain't watch it. So yeah, I, I watch. So, I, would, I would watch it. Again. Dog, it's I would so watch good. It I want. I slick want to just introduce this one, man. Like, I mean, what the fuck go my ahead, book at? Go ahead. Huh? What the fuck my book at? I like Will Smith again. In the uh, <laughs> it might not be in the car. I'm almost done with that book too. That that book is good too. I'm gonna right? have, I'm gonna have this nigga do like an answer one. <laughs> We sat at home with Antoine. He'll yeah. make you sign out books like a library. Around like a library, yeah, for real. God damn. Uh, I'm going to bring your book back. Damn, Keith, I'm going to bring your book back, yeah, too, nigga. Shit. But I thought you said we reading. I, I, I know you're the only person I let somebody borrow, but right, right, right. everybody else ain't borrow. I got you back. But, <laughs> but nah, yeah, so, so, I get bring to it, bring it, so bring it King Richard. I'm in my phone. I ain't seen this You're shit, absolutely man. right about if you have a plan and if you are a strong enough leader to get your family to stick behind that plan, mm-hmm. That is an absolute surefire way to not have this bullshit happen. Start right there, though. Strong it. enough leader, man, to have your family go with it. That's that's a big Dog, statement. That's where, that's where it starts. It, it, that's a big that's statement. That's where it starts. Yeah. You have to be that leader, and you also have to be in an environment that supports that leadership. And this is going to be speaking on some personal shit and just on some real shit to say, you can't be with somebody who don't respect your leadership, period. As a man, it is your job to have an environment that says, I am supporting this leader as this black man, because I understand he ain't gonna lead us into no ditch. Now, and you say that, and that's right. And you're right about that. And that, and you can kind of talk on this too, because yeah. this is an autobiographical story, so it's not like a spoiler. Right. Um, only thing that's spoiled is that only one person got shot in this whole movie. But we'll talk about that later. Um, I want to talk about that too. But yeah, go ahead. yeah, we'll talk about it too. But um, to that point though, if you watch the movie and you hear his wife was his saving grace. And the only reason why his wife was his saving grace, because we talked about on this podcast before, a matter of fact, dig through the crates, when Derrick Jackson went through his situation, mm-hmm. you shout it just in the church. Mm-hmm. The answer to a higher power. They look past the bullshit that their husbands do. And and she said it a couple times oh. to this nigga. She was like, you know, I'm with the plan and I'm, I'm doing some shit, but it's because I answered to a, a higher, higher power. Po- no, 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 no. And that's what shout keeps me. Shout out to the queen. And, and, and I, and shout I'll, out to the queen. I want to point out that though. He said shout out to the church. And I want to be very clear. She answered to a higher power, meaning her God 
not her pastor. Oh no! And I want to be clear oh, about absolutely. I ain't even seen the movie, but I just want to be no, clear. No, that's a fact. Because that's that's, cause that's something that my mom as has always preached. She been on absolutely. this podcast. She preached that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that's what it's about, bro. Because it's like, yo. So so let's just get the episode the, Sunday. Sorry, the episode Sunday coming out for some people that don't touch on this. Yeah. Yeah. So but so let's just give a story. So the story is about Venus and Serena and their upbringing, right? The mm-hmm. story is really about the father of the family and how that how that really happened. It's called King Riches. So. This was an athlete. His wife was an athlete. Um, they had four kids. I'm sorry, three kids before they had Venus and Serena. No, 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 no. no. They had. She had three. Kids. She had three kids. I'm she sorry. She had three. Kids. So she, he stepped. Let's, let's, let's be clear about yeah. that. She because, had. Because he, he caught. Because he caught out. He said one for me. Your ass has been That's no daddy with them three girls. But what, but what he said though. That's so uh, first of all, so y'all saying I'm the most like Richard Rowe right now. I could go. <laughs> nah, you, you don't want to be. You don't oh, want to be. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. matter of fact, let me, let me just put the bad shit out there because we don't get into the good shit. Let me, right. Just let me put the bad shit. What's the bad shit? Cut it. 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 I, I have not seen <laughs> this movie. <laughs> I was saying though, this is like, like look, nah, I, the other ones <laughs> wasn't with the athletes, bro. Nah, this was nah, this was this was nah, Levar Ball. Know, I haven't seen this the movie. was Levar Ball, nah, nah, but he was look. He he was trying to find that he, athlete nah, he, wife. He, he, he was Levar Ball. Um, he definitely he, he, was Levar. He, he, he was Levar. So she had, she had three kids. So, so she had three. Like, uh, I he to had. It, he had no, I'm gonna put the bad shit out there because yeah. I, I want you to get to the good shit and I gotta spoil it because <laughs> he did leave five kids he high did. and dry. You talking um, about that he already had? Yeah, he already had before he met her. Before and he I didn't met know her. So when they met, five. they had eight kids collectively. Correct. Collectively. But she also really didn't know about all of them because yep. she yep. said it in the movie that her that his son just popped up right. at the house and he was like, oh, damn, he found me. Right. And then after that, more kids. More kids start coming out the woodwork. You know what I'm saying? Because so, he had five kids. So he had she had three. He had five before right. her. Let the other five. Same tell, baby mama? Well. Uh, we don't know. Put like this: the five out of the five, only four fuck with him because the one daughter that's the oldest is the most bitter. I read a whole article about mm-hmm. it. She's the most bitter because she remembers her dad leaving. Gotcha. Basically, I'm gonna go buy some milk. Shit, it never came back. Right, 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 right. On that shit, also the the part that he could have even more kids. Right out there because right. he also just recently had a son. So you gotta think about 72. this. This was a black man in the '80s. He also was in the military. He also was an athlete. And not not condoning it, but that shit was going on, bro. Like my dad, shit, my, nigga, like I hope my bad pops, but somebody reached out to me and said, "Yo, I think we have the same father." Well, well, and when I asked my dad, "Was this is this true?" He said, "It's possible because I had just got back from the military. I was moving around. I had did, 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 did. That, that's just kind of oh, the no, culture no, that no, was so, happening." So, so I say all that bad stuff to say when now Martin will get to the part of, this, of the story. I feel like. All this was part of his redemption as well. Yeah, because those I, I are the little, last. Yeah, I like, I little, those like, are the last two. I was so, literally like just about to say, like how did he get to this redemption nah, plan? But I like that because like, he all came, right, fuck these kids. Let me start yeah, over. Exactly. <laughs> but he came to his <laughs> wife one day frantically and was like, "Yo, we need to have two more, and we about to breed them to be the next, the next ones, the next Michael Jordans." She was with it. Had a seventy-two page plan from the day they were born. Took him out. So to he the, was the was the plan. I'm sorry, I'm gonna keep interrupting. Absolutely, you know, that's you know. cool. So was the plan gender bias? Or no, just, no, so, no, 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 no. So no. whether it was boys, he was prepared. Same way. All right, same perfect. way. Same it just way. so happened to be women. It happened, it happened to be, be two girls. girls. He didn't give a damn, bro. He bred them to be. And he didn't that. care if they were twins. Well, not well. They weren't twins. He just said we needed two he more. Said we needed two more. He said, What's the they See, not twins. No. They're not twins. They, they, uh, Venus is the oldest. Yep. Okay. Venus is older. But so check this out. Here's what I really enjoyed about this this story and this what? depiction. I, I, oh no, know, ass nigga. Well, no, it was a part of the plan. It was part of the plan. And I'm gonna tell you why. Let me get because he needed somebody to be build with as I'm pressuring you. You can say that. Stop trying to figure it out, nigga. Let me say that. I do. This how I watch I movies. Know, I this how I, I watch movies. Yeah, but you can say that. But, <laughs> but here's the depiction that I like. But we always hear about the Joe Jackson story, and to a lesser degree, even the Le- the Levar Ball story, where they're super hard on their kids all the time. They they're like, no, I'm strict. I'm not really having a good time. Like the kids look like they're under a lot of duress. All of these things. What they showed about this man is that his kids adored him, and that it was all fun and games. He only treated this shit like a. Like a game, bro. I, I, I don't know, Mark. Cause <laughs> hold on, what's up? What, what did I miss? 
These kids, first of all, they, all the kids had a curfew of nine o'clock, right? It's five girls. You had a grown daughter, right? Nine o'clock curfew. The only two were playing tennis. It was required for the other three to come out to the court with the other two and rack up the balls. Mm -hmm. Like that's what they were doing. And then the oldest one, because she was valedictorian, her job was just to be out there studying. So it's like it, it's it's like it's kind of it is like Joe Jackson, and it's but not a bad help. No, but it's not bad because it breeds it breeds a champion. But what I, like I told my girl, what I got from this movie is uh -uh. I don't want to hear nothing about being too hard. Well, being that, too there strict you go. Because when they police came in his house, I want you to finish. But I got a rebut. But, no, no, no. I'm saying no. Saying, no, it, it's, <laughs> no, no, no. The police, the police came because shit. no, the police yeah. came because they were out there. They were out there performing in the rain. Right. You know what I'm saying? And Having a great time, laughing, giggling, no, kiki. No, everything, everything wasn't a great time because he was about to make them girls walk home, and the mom had to. Like the dad was crazy, bro. But oh, it's no, but it but it's a positive crazy. I it's think a positive he was, crazy. I think he was strict. I think he was he hard did, on his kids. But I think that they respected him enough and loved him enough. They understood that because them car rides over there. Although they, it was like routine for them at that point. It was like yo. We're going to be in the car. We're going to go sit at the tennis court, but we're going to have a good fucking time because we're little girls and we, we're we going to sing in the car. We're going to put on a talent show after dinner. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, like they yeah. had fun, bro. Like no, their I, whole I, no, life no, was. I'm not, no, no. What I'm saying is I'm not saying they didn't have fun because the Jacksons had fun too. <laughs> but no, no, no. The, no, no, the, the, the Jacksons have fun. The Jacksons have fun. When they tell their story, like mm -hmm. Reby and them, they have fun singing. They got beat, but they had fun. They didn't show it in the movie, but I was reading. They got beat too. These here's, girls got beat too. Here's my last point. He was beating his wife. Here, here's my last point. You know what I'm saying? Point. That's why they got divorced. They didn't show that in the movie. They didn't show that in the movie, but I had to go because I, I right. got to know all sides because I, I know it. how movies do. Here, here, so here. because I know that information, I'll say there they had fun, they, but they were strict and stringent. But that is what breeds success right. and champions it's, because it's, Lamar it's, Ball. Pressure, pressure makes diamonds. Yeah, yeah pressure that's makes what diamonds. it is. And that, that's a that's fact. But here's, here's, here's some a little bit of the, uh, the difference, right? Because remember when they were talking about the tournaments? And he was like, I'm specifically holding my daughters out of these tournaments because I want them to be kids. Oh, I want yeah. them to go to the recitals. I, I want them to that. learn piano. I, I, I want them to learn other languages. I don't want them to but live that was a part like of the these plan. little tennis players. But that was part of the plan. Exactly. But that's why I'm like, yo, he's different. He's a different dad to me. Like a lot of these dads were saying, no, nigga, you dance, you sing, you dance, you sing, you dance and you sing. God damn it. Like, that's it. He was like, nah, I want you to be a kid. I also want you to understand that I have a plan for you to say that we are going to build generational wealth. We're going to be the, you, you're going to be number one, Venus. Serena, you're going to be the greatest of all time. He said that shit. But, but that was in but, his plan. No, no, I'm getting it's, goosebumps. It's, no, no, it's, it's in his plan. Crazy, it's dog. in his plan. But the only thing, the only thing. <laughs> I'm so hyped about that movie. No, dog. no, it, it's in his plan. I'm and sorry for his daughter. <laughs> no, no, I mean, a lot, a, lot, a lot of kids, I mean, I think when it shows I for parents. I bought a tennis racket last night. <laughs> I think when it shows for parents is that the dedication, you have to have just as much dedication and love for the sport, whatever your kid is doing, and they'll love it too. Because I know there's been conversations about what if they didn't like it. Or, yeah, no, no, no. Them girls end no, they up loved it. They, they, they love tennis. Can we put, you know can we saying? have a real conversation though? Yeah. And, it, and it's we've, in them. we've seen this before. Mm -hmm. The the only difference is they don't create icons of celebrities. They create doctors right. and scientists. Right. Mm. Think about and, the Nigerian about, community. You talk about yeah, yeah, you yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, Asians, yeah. Nigerians, Tiger mom. We've all went to school with that one yeah. girl. That said, her mama did not play. Yeah. Her daddy did not play. It was home. Like we homework. we we've seen yeah. that kid See, that's my, doing homework my at mom, lunch. My mom you know what I'm saying? Play. Like, but I'm just saying yeah. they don't create celebrities. They I don't agree. create athletes. They create doctors because it's a more guided plan. Streamline. Like I can get yeah. my daughter to be a doctor. Like literally, right now I can have a daughter, right. and I there's a clear path right, right, right. for her to become one. There's not one to become an athlete. Let me let me put this point in here too. Here's one other thing that they adopted from their father that I know made the difference and set them apart. Confidence. Oh yeah. He was the <laughs> most confident. He was Kanye. He was the most confident nigga on the planet. And you know what happened? His confidence he got did, his ass beat. That's what happened. It, it did get his ass beat. But his confidence <laughs> he got beat up by. Uh, some nigga trying to highlight at his daughter. Uh, OG it, niggas. OG. But he showed restraint there too. So it's so many different places. So I want to stay on the confidence point for a minute. It's, I, I heard his shirts for love as fuck. Oh, the whole yeah, time. Oh, nigga. And then you see the real footage? Oh, that's, nigga, that was true to life. Yeah, 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 I mean, because you got to wear the shorts for the people. So the people. But his confidence <laughs> transferred because Venus, 
Venus people, was people like people ain't never seen shorts. Like right, this. right. Venus yeah. was like, nigga, I'm Venus Williams. Yeah. He said, it ain't it ain't about what my daddy think. My daddy didn't even watch my games from a point where I can look at him. It mm. wasn't about him, nigga. It's about me. I'm on this bitch. And that came directly from him. And that's that's all I gotta say is like that's one of the major differences that he inherently gave his daughter confidence so, along with teaching her. I, I seen an article, I read an article on it, and it said, you know, this movie did something that we rarely get to see. Mm. All the emotions of a black father. Yeah. Did you see that? Talk and what were the other emotions? I mean, I see, I respected it and I liked it because I, as I was reading the articles and did research before I saw the movie, I wanted to know how they're going to bring up the other kids. How are they going to... They didn't touch on the domestic abuse of the wife because no, it was kind of uh, alleged and the sisters produced. Like, all the sisters came together to produce this. Mm. So that's also... All the sisters that was in the house. Yeah, that that's, was in the house. Okay. So that's... that's the, and, and one of... The pet, one of the previous so in the, the house I, it was the five. three girls yeah. and plus and Serena yeah right. uh, I mean Serena and Venus and um now in his later age that he's older and had a stroke for the previous five one of the previous five is his ward of the state taking care of him mm -hmm. um and he just had a son like a seventy two so he has like a little kid um <laughs> so but what I saw was okay how are you gonna bring that up right and then what what did he instill in Venus and Serena to for them to want to honor their father in this way right so i liked how they show the restraint of because and you're gonna go through this i'm gonna go through this because we have daughters you're gonna go through a point where your daughter is gonna be attractive mm -hmm. and she's gonna and, and other people are gonna look and it's gonna be that one fucking knucklehead mm -hmm. that does this no respect for you no respect for the situation hey let me holler let me holler and Knowing the type, especially knowing the type of nigga you use, I know you're gonna run up on the nigga. Yeah. Like, hey, bro, chill the fuck out, talk to my right, dog. Right. And if it has to go, it has to go there. Right. Um, so I like that he showed restraint there, but when he took it too far, he got down. He almost and, did, and, but 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 because he was sticking to the plan. Even in that moment, I was like, why wouldn't he just pull out a whatever? And, cause cause as soon as he pulled out the gun when he came to his security job, I said, I stopped the movie. I said, that showed me a lot of restraint. Because I know I can pop off on that nigga, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna get my ass beat because if I pop off, I'm going to jail. Mm -hmm. That's not a part of the plan. And, and, and I like that he would fight for his stepdaughters. You know what I'm saying? Because right. he, even though he said it to the wife, but he never, he never saw him treated like that. I like the emotions of the happiness, the joy, the I'm showing you something new and you got it. Um, we connecting like you actually liking what I'm liking, and you you see it. Uh, hell, the, the enjoyment of your partner being in on it, too. Because she was out there reading the books. And she was like, that open stance you keep talking about, you, right. know, you know you got it from me. Right. I was the one that took. Because, I mean, even if you see the real footage. Because they, both, play, about, they, they both played they tennis. Both was yeah, well, they both were athletes. And they both. They what, was, play, what was his sport versus her sport? They didn't say what sports they played. Yeah, they just said that yeah, they, yeah. Were they had athletic aptitude. And that they read and watched enough tennis. And, like, read the books and was, like, out there, too. Um, and in real life, he couldn't do it fully. Because he, he, had had a a lane, he had a bad foot, yeah. he had stabbed. Um, which see, the only part, the only thing in the movie that fucks me up mm. is that this man kept telling his kids how these white folks done beat his ass, yeah. and everybody who hit him, oh, yeah, put this on. everybody who, <laughs> everybody who hit him, everybody who beat him up was a white man, right? Mm -hmm. And they fucked him. Every fight I got into was with a white man. This white man stabbed me in his foot. And Serena met, went and married that white man. Like, mm. and when they said. He whispered like he just couldn't hear it on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just that saying. And, and the fact clean. that he didn't go to the wedding. Like, that's, I remember at first weird. they used to say, oh, why he didn't go to the wedding? Right. And I kind of didn't understand. I just thought maybe it was just on some general. Oh, I don't want her marrying the white man. But like, a lot. Well, half, I, half of his drive, too, was like, you know, when he sat down with the white man for the deal, mm -hmm. right? And he said, you keep talking about this is incredible. You right, keep saying right, this is incredible, right, right, incredible. Right, right, like, right. what's so different? My kids are playing tennis like these other. Why you keep saying it's because I'm black? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He even he even farted on these niggas and walked away. That like, bro, he, he did not fuck with the white folks. That's why he took him out of juniors. He was like, you know what? These white folks, they running their kids ragged. This bitch is on drugs. Right. I asked you how she was doing. You lied. This bitch is on drugs with cocaine right, and heroin. Right, right. I'm not finna do what these white parents are doing. Y'all coming at the black... It was just so much racial think, tension too. I just don't understand that. I think I think that is a breadcrumb of what we also not seeing. You know what I'm saying? I love my dad, but that's a bread. That's a direct breadcrumb of yeah, nigga. Fuck you. Like it's some, that's a little fuck you in there, bro. A little bit of fuck you. In there. Like it gotta be to even. I mean, I get it. 
Well, let's let's talk about that conversation a little bit. But like you know, it ain't like she wasn't trying to date brothers. Yeah. And that's the one thing I give Serena. Like, you know what I'm saying? She tried she tried to get a lot of you know, I blame Jamie Foxx. I feel like Jamie should have gone ahead and just, like, yeah, 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 like, sure. like, why you playing Can with that one? Like, tennis ball. <laughs> I think you, you can you throw me up against, against the wall. wall. <laughs> hey, so it bro, the nigga did this like two years in a row, bro. What, like, say, what was the last line? <laughs> I want no, it no, no, inside no, no. <laughs> Can I get finger snaps, please? Finger snaps. Yes. Yes, you can, Paul. We're going to slow it down today. <laughs> give it up if you're having a good time here at the SBC. Give it up. Give it up one of the most talented <laughs> niggas, dog. <laughs> Jamie. Exactly. I want the Jamie Foxx book. The most that talented. bullshit he just put out. Serena, most I talented. love you, Serena. I know you have someone that's just, yeah, that you're dating. Yeah. I can't say it right now. <laughs> Keisha. <laughs> <laughs> See, fuck you, Keisha. But Serena, this song is dedicated to you, and, and it's simply named. It's coming out on the ESPN record, so make sure you go get that as soon as you can. It's called "Can I Be Your Tennis Ball." <laughs> can I be your tennis ball? Ball, tennis ball, tennis ball. You can smack me up against the wall. This during Jimmy Fox show days too. Man. Do it slow or do it fast. Why y'all niggas know the words? <laughs> Tank show, tank bag, <laughs> bro. Cause I watched this shit a hundred times. Hey, she so she embarrassed, but she put it. She laughed. Beyonce, C, and Jay Z, ain't that wrong? Tank, tank, tank. I'm tired of that Ashanti song. <laughs> Can you put me on? Let me be your tennis ball. We can go 30, hey, love, go. 30, 40, love, advantage you until we get to the <laughs> Hey, man, that nigga hey, great, dog. Hey, hey, he's so, great, dog. He's great. Hey, yeah, I could do a whole episode <laughs> on just who Jamie is and how genius and we might nah, do that. We might just do an evergreen one day and yeah. sit down yeah. and just break down. Jamie so I didn't, I didn't start, I didn't start it's fucking with tennis different. um until and that's who I might go see. If I see this movie early, I'm gonna go ahead and just treat Parham and his daughter to go see it. Cause Zynga made me start liking tennis. So and Zynga is like. She been shit, killing this shit it. She came on HBO Max. She probably already seen this oh, yeah, two, yeah, three yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. So in Zynga, like <laughs> Parhand, hey, shout out Parhand. I know you wrote a seventy-five page play. <laughs> exactly. So, so in Zynga, she she's super talented and just start. I remember just playing with them. That shit got fun for me. But and I knew a little bit of it because I went to school with white people. Mm-hmm. But um, it's 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 a boring. I got kicked out of a game because you can't cheer. Mm-hmm. So I got kicked out of one of her games See, before. Yeah, like shit like golf and, and tennis where you can't like make no noise. That's kinda mm-hmm. I don't yeah, know. but that 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 again, that's sports culturally designed mm-hmm. where you don't want us in it. Cause we, we 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 you know I mean even got so bad to where they stopped telling them to grunt. Remember they was like ah. mm-hmm. they was like, Yeah, you got it, y'all gotta cut them. But then the white boy get to break his right. You know, that's what I said. It's if it's, you don't understand white supremacy, everything else will confuse oh, and, you. Oh, and at the end of the movie, they show you white supremacy. At the, you know what I'm saying? When old girl trying to ice her out, and oh, it's yeah, like little bullshit yeah, yeah. rules. Like and I think she was coked up. She had to be. Well, I don't know about. I don't know if she was coked up or not, but I just know that's a bullshit rule. Nah, like yeah, for sure. I can stay in the bathroom as, as long, long as I want. want to, and that fucked her up. But 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 what happened at the end, nigga? Hey, look, I'm not oh, gonna lie. Yeah. What happened at the end, nigga? Hey, that was. I'm not gonna lie, nigga. I dropped a lot. I dropped a few of them on that movie in different moments. I'm talking about it was a couple like little small, little tears, little cry. Then it was a couple like boo hoo. And at the end when they showed the real pictures yeah, or whatever, yeah. nigga, yeah, like, I, I, yeah. I just love the, I just love the fact that, like you said, he gave his daughters a lot of faculty to make their own decisions. I mean, he did guide them and he did when he was stringent when he was stringent. Mm-hmm. But like playing wise, hey, when you're playing. It's Have fun. just fun. Have fun. Don't take it too seriously. He serious. said that every time. Have um, fun. And when you beat these girls because you're better than all these girls, be humble. Right. I don't want because he's about to have them watch Cinderella like two, three times in a row. Like right. what? What's the moral of the story? Right. The moral of the story is no matter what that girl was going through, no matter how beautiful or how poor, she had a pure heart. That's a fact. She was humble, mm-hmm. which also is crazy. Like that. That's just the Disney shit because they went to Disney a lot too. But right. it's like that part and what he showed them and how he taught them. Like look. 
Y'all gonna be the best, but be humble about it. I don't it. like all of that sometimes, though. I like the fact that, you know, why we got no, it, why I, we the only ones gotta walk around with our head down? No, no, no. I don't, I don't think you know it's head down. I, mean? I don't like, think it's head down. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's, uh, I think it's a level of humility because I respect be, that. Because, and especially if you sports, don't, if you don't teach it, if you don't teach it, a child don't have the maturity not to fuck it up. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, because, and you know what it was a balance though, and I, I'm gonna get back to you, but it, it, the balance was he taught him confidence too. So it wasn't that, that's hum, what I mean. humble that I'm not da 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 da. Nah, I'm still. That's why I say humility. Am, that's why I say humility but, because it's like you're gonna beat these girls, right? right? right so right, that's a given. Right. So if I don't teach you humility, you're gonna go out there and get bigger, that's a fact. get the big head and yeah, think you're bigger yeah, than who fact, you are. Nah, because when she lost, her dad also said, look, how you handle this moment mm-hmm. is really who you really are. Because those really wins ain't gonna. But this is who you really are. So I think I appreciate that because she had enough faculty at the end when Nike came and gave her a deal. And they were like, hold on, Venus, what do you want to do? And Venus was like, well, I haven't even had a chance to play yet. So I want to show and you're about to give me, what, three mil? She was like, I want I want a chance to play. And nah, I don't want to take this deal. And yeah, the white man, he's like, man, you come on to the deal. Because he's getting 15% of anything. Right. But what happened at the that, end? That confidence, Nike, man. Reebok, Puma, yep. everybody called. Yep. And then she's 15, signed a $12 million yep. deal. Yeah, but so I'll say this, and that's and this is what I did not like about the movie. I needed more Serena. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think there should I be. A, I needed more. Somebody Serena. said there might be a part two. It can't. It can't be no part. This ain't no Marvel shit. This ain't no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when, when, no in, when no end credits yeah. on this shit in, yeah. and Serena pick up the racket like it's my turn. Yeah, like right, nah. right, 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 right. because I. But they I alluded least, to it with that part where they, and they alluded to. Well, but that I, might, I wanted that to see, might go back to my breadcrumbs. What the fuck you? Well, but, but, but I wanted. I wanted to. I wanted to see them playing the doubles because see, I remember when Serena and Venus was playing those doubles right, right. and they were sisters beating these girls. And I wanted to see them play against each other because that was a hype thing. Not nah, for sure. Because because it, it was like, damn, but the they, only thing that so, could happen was for Serena to play against Venus. Yeah, because they were the one and two. And when I read the when I checked the stats though, <clears throat> Venus did what she said she was going to do. She got to Wimbledon five times. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and Serena did what she said she was yeah. going to do. She's the most winningest. She's the most winningest, athlete, but she didn't win the Wimbledon the most times. She didn't beat her sister in the Wimbledon wins. So. But it, she ended up being a goat, so it's still it's her I, dad. I think, I think, yeah, yeah. So I think. Yeah. I, I feel like it's, I feel like it's, it's a great so plan because dope, bro. your daughter, your, both of your daughters are goats, and respectively. So if you want to argue, it's one of those things where you can argue for either one. That's a I fact. can sit here and give you a bunch of Venus facts. You can give me a bunch of Serena facts, and you we but won't he be said, wrong. But he said, "I wanted Venus to pop out first because I wanted her to be number one, and I wanted you to stay in her shadow long enough to give you that drive to say." I got to be the greatest of all time. Like, so, that's so, like, that's powerful, bro. And I think that's why. It's powerful. And haven't even seen it. Just speaking, Oh, oh speaking. And, the, and the last thing is, he had, he had and he has a son. And he said he doesn't want his son playing no tennis. He doesn't want his son playing no tennis. Because he realized once they got into the sports field that all the owners, all the GMs, they never play ball. But they sign checks. Yeah. So he said he wants his son to get into cryptocurrency and commodities. So he has a plan written for that. So, I, so just knowing what he did with the plan for hey, tennis, I'm think I got chills thinking about. I that. got the like, episode. Damn, t- I got the episode title. I just, Shout it out just to came Black to me. Dads, bro. The title cut just came to me. <laughs> Black men. What's it? What's his name? King Richard. Richard. Black men wants Richard playing like Black women want Sierra, Sierra Prayer. Yeah. 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 Hey. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. 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 Episode title cut, yeah. bro. And, like and dog, good look, man. cause who don't want to see it? Seventy two pages. I mean, who don't want to see seventy two pages? Come on. Like I already, the only reason I can relate, I remember when I was in my past relationship dealing with someone's daughter, and I remember how intentional I was being right. with that shit. Right. <laughs> like, right, like nigga, cause I always talk about. I love my parents, but my parents were so busy working, and it was so many of us. My parents really didn't really take a look to see that. Nigga, I was a pretty talented, like, I was a different kid <laughs> since I was young. Like, who y'all see now, I've always been that way. And if you were more locked in, you pr- you're you putting a plan to complement that. I turned out great. They gave me a great opportunity. They gave me a great path, mm-hmm. but it wasn't as intentional. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's so, that's what I got from this movie. Yeah. It, the, in, the intentionality. The intentionality yeah. of it. The, yeah. the intentionality. Yeah, so like, and, and he, like I said, and, and to that point, I did like that part of the movie too. He told his uh, wife, like, yeah, when you met me though, you thought I was just some dumbass nigga, but I wrote this right, plan right, out, right. and 
we and here you know in Florida what? You know what? off of the plan. And mind you, yeah. see, remember how he got the floor? He, yep. he juked that yep. plan, yep. bro. Yep. Like, hey, look. He told that one coach, hey, I don't know what other coach going to do it for free. He said, you did it for free. You did it for free. And then he said, look, look. The, the one coach was like, here's our standard agreement. He said, right. Here's our standard agreement, though. You know what I'm saying? You look at that, look it over, and let me know what you think. So I need it. a house. I need a job for me and my wife. And I need a mobile home to get there, goddamn. We got to get there, right? Yeah. That's what he said. And we got to get there. there right? He said, hold on. You didn't tell me your daughter ain't playing. He the said, juniors. Oh. He said, oh, yeah, yeah. We ain't playing juniors. We'll, we'll go pro in a couple of years. Oh, he was he was a giant. So one thing you said, though, you know, I ain't speaking about your relationship. I'm speaking about just in general, goddamn. But part of that plan was for his wife to submit to his plan and you got to be once again in an environment that's willing to submit to your leadership if that plan is going to work at all and if oh, yeah, he, and if that ain't the one then that ain't the one well, somebody gonna do it well I, I think it goes back to what we said too you and, it, and i think it's for both parts of the relationship you there has to be some type of spirituality in the relationship mm -hmm. to keep to because it's like she said it's times where she been wanting to lead that nigga right she said i've been wanting to lead your ass a couple times but i answered to Something a little higher, so it's not gonna affect. Yeah. Uh, and it's something higher, so that's why I'm still here. So like, so so yeah, you need somebody to submit, but I also feel like you need somebody that also knows it's bigger than right, you. Right, yeah, right. you know what I'm saying. It's, and it's bigger than us. People over purpose, right? You know and what I'm saying. Conduit purpose, of people. Purpose, over people. purpose over people. Yeah. Purpose over people. Like right. because if I'm looking at the plan, I know you could me you doing some shit that can make me mad at you. That can ultimately fuck up the plan. So I got to look through you sometimes. But I will say, ultimately, though, and to your point, you are right, though. A man has to have a plan, and the woman should respect the plan. Can I, the woman create a plan and a man follow it? See. <laughs> see. Look, 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 he okay. I got a perfect. You tell us no, 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 no. I got a perfect analogy. I got for y'all stupid in here, but I got a perfect analogy for this, bro. I got a perfect one. Reading the Will Smith book. If you haven't read it, go check that out. In the beginning, he talks about his father, Daddyo, is what they called him. It's a perfect, perfect um, analogy for this story. It was a time period where Will was kind of going against his reign, just being a teenager, whatever the case was. He checked Will in the middle of the street and said this. <clears throat> he said, when I was in the military, the captain told me, if there's two captains on the team, we all die. Because if I'm telling you to go left and the other captain's telling you to go right, we're dead. So in this household, if there's two captains, we're dead. So I'm either the captain or you're either the captain, period. And so to answer your question, I think that there's possible for the woman to make the plan. But who's the captain? You know what I'm saying? And I think that that might vary situation by situation, but I think that we are different for a reason. Masculine energy and feminine energy are different for a reason. And I think that one should be the captain. And one should support that captain and know when it's her turn to jump in, just like the wife. She <laughs> said, you know what I'm saying? But you see what he just did there? Yeah. You see what he just did yeah. there? <laughs> <laughs> Look, ain't nobody supposed to catch that. <laughs> Ain't nobody catch that with y'all, So, y'all ever seen that uh, Buzz Bunny meme? No. <laughs> no. Oh, man. I mean, it's real, though, bro. To be told, I, and people know how I be feeling about it. Can, can a woman make a plan? Hell yeah, she can make a plan. Absolutely. But will the plan be as thorough as the man's plan? I don't know. I don't know. Because... There's been it's rare that we've seen a woman come up with a full plan for for no no hold on hold on let me let me finish let me finish let me finish a plan a plan for a whole family unit man included I'm not talking about Oprah I ain't talking about Kim Kardashian mama I'm talking about like a plan for the family for the man as well and it's a full plan I let's I can't the statement was I don't know if a woman can make a plan I guess as well as a man so is it a plan for a family or is it a plan in general because it's going to be somebody the plan, in the like cause what keeps saying is somebody a woman what keeps saying is we have seen women without a man in the house create successful household successful children right the question is with your husband right, there right right I just wanted to clarify because yeah, the comments that's, might you know, be popular. No, no, you know no, no that's 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 why I, that's I, think why I said we, it like I think that. we've seen that's it. That's why I said I, like that because like we've I, seen it because there are it, when we talk about men, there are such things as beta men, alpha men, right. and there are beta men that I don't believe that shit. 
You don't believe in baby. You don't believe there's no such thing, baby. Nah, I I just believe. I just believe. You don't believe in bitch ass niggas. Yeah, I believe in bitch ass <laughs> niggas. I believe in bitch ass niggas, but I don't like the beta man alpha. Man. There's just there's just bitch ass niggas, and there's a lot of women, and there's a lot of women who like bitch ass niggas. And if you don't know it, you can see it out here so, in Atlanta every so day. So what is it? So you just don't believe the concept of being a the, yeah? Because I I believe that any man in a man situation, he's he's going to be out. Like we when, when you're talking about relationships with women. Now if you're talking about like between men and like a wolf pack situation. Like yeah yeah, yeah. but I'm talking about between a woman and a man, the man is always gonna be dominant, no no matter what. Yeah, I see I see I see uh yeah. I see dudes that literally. Do you think them niggas would be lazy sitting at home playing PlayStation all day on the internet? They got the women paying the fucking bitch pay take your ass to work pay yeah, these bills. I don't look that's at that as an alpha. alpha. That's not a beta to that's me. Not a beta, he, that's a lazy I, ass I, alpha. I agree, okay, agree, okay. Agree. That's a lazy yeah, ass yeah, alpha. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Hey, look, I agree. that ain't her plan. I've been, trying to, I've been over here. I've been over here trying to figure out a good example. And figure I out how not to get canceled. And I haven't. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. But I'm trying to figure out a good example of like a woman. Um, Leading the ship and her man just kind of following by. And every example that I've come up with, like the man playing the supporting role, it's always the man has something else going on. So like, not, like Remy Ma, Papoose, right? Like you know who Pap was before and during. That was Pap's plan. Yeah. That was Pap. Pap, Pap decided to stay with Remy when she went in and do all. Pap could have dipped. They ain't had no time. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, I see what you're saying. Even with the Beyonce and Jay, that's the. Jay Z's playing. Yeah, like, but he's not a supporting the, cast. He's the just one, like, the <laughs> one role he was super behind the scene, mm-hmm. but he's an alpha. Stepman. He's super behind the scene. But you don't look at Stepman like no bitch. You look at him like Matter a pimp. I remember that Karen Hunter interview. Stepman has a fucking plan. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, Ste- Stepman telling Oprah no. And that's what I wonder what that happened. Yeah, can't spend a night at night. But th- these are the stories. <laughs> these are the stories <laughs> we gotta <laughs> find <laughs> out, bro. How does Stedman or does Stedman run his household well, as far well, as well, the because, leadership because role? Because you said it. Because even when there is, even when there does seem like to be a plan, the man has something else going on. So we're, what we're saying is, we're not saying a woman can't create a plan. For we ain't everybody. say nothing. Keith said it. Guys. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking, <laughs> no, I'm speaking y'all, y'all what, I'm speaking what, what Keith said. <laughs> I understand. We just need to see a, a clear example of where the woman made the plan for the family She's the captain Executing the plan mm-hmm. And the man is participating And it was successful We're just asking for an example I haven't found one yet Yeah I mean Maybe I ain't thought of it Maybe and, I haven't thought and, of it And, and, and maybe as we say this Cause you know We don't have women yeah, Here yeah, now yeah. But as they listen They'll be like Oh what about this What about yeah, this Yeah cause that, we ain't saying It don't exist We just yeah. can't think of nothing But what, what I'm saying is That's the reason why I said it like that Because it's hard To see it with the whole Cause even in the man's plan I know there's some women Who be like well it was my plan to stay down with my man. Oh yeah, I appreciate that. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you got to yeah, follow the leaders. Macro and micro cuz yeah. you would look at that as kind of being a micro thing when the macro plan is, yeah, you staying with me is important, but the macro is, yo, we're going to have three kids, one's going to be a doctor, one's going to be this. By the time we get this age, we're going to be X amount of dollars up. Yeah. We're going to be this, this and, and that. And I don't think there's nothing wrong with that because also with being the captain, you you're the first in line. So yeah. And you taking these bruises and, yep. and bruises. You yep. you got the machete. Yep. You're chopping yep. down the fucking bushes. So you see how she looked at her husband after he came home with all them, all them, because she knew that he was protecting the plan. Yeah, he was protecting the plan, and she looked at him and was like, "Yo, this nigga getting his ass beat, gun butt in the back." And said he almost killed a man that night. But she looking at him like, "Oh, this is the the greatest nigga mm-hmm. in the world." Like, and I did, and I did like that moment too. I like the fact that he stood his ground. So when the other nigga got taken out, now the gangsters is helping him. Like, exactly. hey, 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 Richard, who's who's this white boy on the block? Exactly. He's like, nah, he with me, he with yeah, me. Okay, you, you gotta okay, know, cool. you gotta know how to pick and fight your battles. Yeah. I probably wouldn't have fought that day either until he said what he said. Yeah, Goddamn. yeah. He said he gonna run a train on my daughter. Yeah, I don't care if you beat my ass to. To the end of the world, I'm beating your ass, or I'm killing you for saying what yeah. you said to my daughter. Nigga. You know I don't no have to retaliate shit. about me, nigga. You you tell me some shit like that, nigga. You I gotta see you. So speaking of that, so he was his plan. Did his plan talk about their dating? No. Well, in the in, not, in the movie, not in the movie, but in the in the articles I read, yeah, no dates. No so dates. they so basically they didn't have any friends so, outside of their sisters. Yeah, because I I was about to say like, how do gang. you? How do you do that? Like, because I know the dating gets confusing right. because we start talking about because a dude and as fathers with daughters right. and as dudes that have dated, 
A dude can completely throw your daughter's focus off. Oh, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You can get with a dude that challenged your daughter and you're like, oh, I can tell you a good dog. Or you can get with a dude that got your daughter on IG Live saying, this is my baby mama. You know what I'm saying? Like, we about to, we about to get there, y'all. So, so, you know, I'm here now. So, <laughs> I'm here. So, yeah, I... Well, in articles I read, he didn't say it in the movie, but in articles, no dating. Nobody could date um, till they left the house, was in school and stuff. Oh. So, and then how did, one how, did, how, did, how did you keep them from like, because you know, we always talk yeah. about sneaking out and Cause rebelling. On, and, oh, oh, well. On it, one behind the scenes clip, they said it. Venus was like, yeah, you're going to like this boy named da 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 da. Because he was talking to the younger per- person that played her as an actor. She was yeah. like, yeah, you're going to end up liking this boy da 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 da. You gonna date him for a little bit, but he ain't the one, sis. Don't that they was just playing around, but so they probably ended up dating. They just weren't technically allowed nah. to. The, yeah, they did a little sneak date. That's what I'm saying. They, they weren't allowed but, because, to. Because uh, we all, you know what I mean. Well, they talked about in the movie when she said I was supporting us, right? Because you you was focused on the girls, so he didn't work. Right. All, the only thing he did was focus on the girls right, and work right, the little right, bullshit right, security right, job right, at right. night. But there was 24 hours. I and to your point, how do you do that? I know I grew up with some people who had parents like that. It was like, damn. Somebody always home. Either your mom or your daddy or your grandma. Right. Somebody was always fucking home. So unless you snuck out and then you couldn't be out that long because somebody looking right. for you, you but weren't kids really sneaky. Kids shit. are sneaky though because my mom was super strict and she said we couldn't date till we were 16. For one, we had girlfriends all throughout our, our life. Mm-hmm. And then for two, we couldn't have nobody over. But yeah, what? The window open, we can jump off the roof. Oh, yeah. And like, I knew what time my mama went to work and I knew what time the school bus came. And if I also, timed it up right, she would think I'm walking to the school bus and I'm walking to the but, Coda bus. But you're also a boy. And what I do know too, boys are a little bit more rebellious than girls. Like, girls, they will. You, boys more honey. Boy, boy <laughs> more honey, <laughs> but girls be way more sneakier. No, girls be way more sneakier, but girls will. Listen, They'll play it safe. Like, yeah, girls are smart. They'll sneaky. play it safe. They'll play, play it safe. That's the best way to say. Because they won't get caught. We will. Well, also too, they start believing in their plan too. They like they're they're because you also have to remember where they grew up. They grew up around a bunch of girls who was out there fucking getting pregnant yeah, early and CPT, fucking on their plan. Right. So if they were rich. And maybe didn't weren't exposed to oh if you don't listen this is what could happen right. they probably would have been off the rails mm-hmm. but they saw oh when you when your daddy ain't here and you don't listen you end up like such and such right so I, I think I that helped that. too I can get that so, but so yeah as fathers man how do y'all respond to what uh the baby and Delaney Delaney <laughs> Danny <Delaney. laughs> <laughs> Hey, I don't yo, know. I, mean, I ain't never heard that motherfucker to the video uh, game. Right? You, you heard Danny Lane, man. She had a little song. She had a song with Kurt Brown. Um, um, I'm, I'm going to play. We keep talking. It was a dancing song. So it, it, I don't have too much on this story. It, it's unfortunate that it got out. It it, it seems like, so to, to, to introduce it, right? Mm-hmm. Danny Lee and the baby was on Instagram Live. They have a kid together. Um, and he basically was on there talking about this chick is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, which I thought was. A little out, out egregious, bro. So if he went live, I thought it was a little. If egregious. he went live in the middle of an argument, it was because he said he was protecting himself, and he's saying, and I can believe that, and I can believe that. I, I went through, I went through but that. Nigga, before. you don't gotta go live. You could just record, bro. Nah, you could but just not, record. If you, oh yeah, yeah, yeah I heard it. it was like this, and it might have been one or two more songs. So right? no, what I'm saying is, I've I've dated a chick, and. Her pride was so real. Like, if I wanted us to have a good time, I invited company over. Because I know if company was over, right. she was good. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, she, she like, put on this show. So, if you know somebody somebody like that coming up, music industry, shit, right. I ain't about to act crazy on live. That's why, she, that's why you hear her say, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, know, I agree. I think it so definitely I, was a I think, smart I think move. going live as a brother, if you, something is going wrong, Going you, live or recording? No, bro. going live. So you see live action of what's if you're not doing nothing to hurt her, because yeah, nah, I don't got lied on too many times. But that's bro. tough, bro. I, I, you, ultimately, I did some baby he mama shit. He shouldn't have said that shit. He should, but I'm he saying shouldn't going, have been, he shouldn't have been there, bro. Like the whole situation is stupid as fuck. Like the whole situation yeah, is stupid bro. as fuck. Hey, give me the whole situation. I'm just saying. No, no, lie, the whole situation talk, is coming from a nigga. I don't, you know, I don't hit women. So like, well, well let's let's just, right. let's just go let's just go by the storyline. Let's just see what this is, right? The baby, you know who the baby is, right? right? The baby yeah, they got a head like a nigga that bad. <laughs> the ba- yeah, the like baby that. already. First of all, yeah, it was already rumors about him and Danny Lay, right? So he wasn't never really he. 
so let's be real. And, and women, this is where y'all get the real shit, right? Mm. Because I've been hearing a lot of bullshit commentary by these Derrick Jackson ass niggas. Like, oh, duh, duh, duh. let's keep it real. All right, real. This this nigga was fucking with Danny Lay. Danny Lay was fucking with this nigga. Check. This nigga, the baby, is a famous celebrity ass nigga. Right. She was taking hella pictures with this nigga, happy to be with this nigga, even wrote a whole song about it. Is she yeah. posting any of them? No. Oh, she, she posted. The, the she baby posted. wrote a song about her. Nah, what song? The uh, masterpiece, and she was in the video. Not right. I, they, okay, okay. Even better. Even better. Even better. I'm glad you said this. <laughs> even better because. She even wrote a song about it called Yellow Bone. That's what he want because his other baby mama's is dark skin and shit, right? Boom. Now she gets pregnant. There's a bunch of rumors going around like, oh, is she pregnant? Is that the baby's baby? Da, 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 da. Now she's in this video. Now this is all from her perspective. Oh, I'm taking pictures with you. We taking these baby pictures. And I mean, you're putting me up in these apartments. Da, 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 da. Now switch it to the baby side. Let's go to the baby side. And as a father, this is what I would be observing and telling my daughter. Hmm. Okay, you fucking with this dude, right? Cool. He's a he's a super famous celebrity. He probably don't run all his social media and all that. So I'm not tripping off of the the not not being posted, right? Because I also know what celebrity life and I know what that is. Yeah. And I also know that you've been posting and he ain't been telling you to take him down or nothing like that. Right. So he's cool with it because you know most niggas would be like, hey, but take, that take, down, take, take that down. Take that down. He, she, he ain't say take it down or nothing. So she was still posting. Even he in the video laughing out with the money, all that. Cool. So that would lead me to believe, oh, okay, y'all have something. Y'all have something. Is that your boyfriend? That's what I would ask. Is this your boyfriend? We ain't talked about it yet. Boom. So then, 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 to get to Mark's point, I would hear this song called Masterpiece. Is this supposed to be an ode to you? My chick is a masterpiece. Still suck my dick when she mad at me. Like, nah, baby girl, this ain't this ain't the man that's respecting you. This ain't this is not an ode to you. You know what I'm saying? I, I've heard Ronald Isley sing to a woman. You know what I'm saying? I, I heard Charlie Wilson. My baby. Come on, that's King a song. Keith. That's a song. Come on, King <laughs> Keith. That's a song that's dedicated to you. You know what I'm saying? Come don't on, King don't. Keith. So once I heard the masterpiece, I would have told, hey, hey, look here, baby girl. I'll tell you right now, don't get pregnant. Don't get pregnant if if that's not what you want. If this this ain't your boyfriend, this I would I would start letting her know what it is. I know now, a grown woman right now. Mm-hmm. And Grown woman who's positioned young, and when I say a woman's positioned young, <laughs> that means <laughs> she. Old. I think we know what that means. <laughs> now she older. She just act younger, right. hang around younger. Like I wouldn't know you in your forties. Right, right, right. Dating a dude, and I'm like, y'all together? Well, we haven't talked about. How long y'all been? How long y'all been talking? Like when we this grown. It's either this what it is or this what it ain't. I understand there's a period of time where we just kicking it, trying to figure it out. But at some point. After 30. At some point, you have to be like, this is what I want to do. I want to do this exclusively or I don't. If you really let me fuck me like a thought, if you really let me do what I say, I... I ain't mad at either one of them lines For your daughter? No, for my shawty But we, we, we talking from King Richard and plans and daughter Like oh, advice yeah. no, no. <laughs> So but, but I mean in private I'm not going to make a song and blast it out But I would tell my shawty like get, yeah be, be, be who you are going to be on front of the camera But yeah slut it out So for me the, I, yeah. think, I think we got to start having a real conversation About you know context clues of dating, mm-hmm. you, you know what I mean. I think, and I think dudes pick up context clues really well, mm-hmm. and we have to accept that's what it is. Like, mm-hmm. I got some shot that called me, and then I'm like, "You must be hungry," because <laughs> you could pick up context clues. You know what I mean. You know what you know what it is when a sister really wants you. That's you know how fact. she acts that's when she really wants you. Oh, women! I feel like they know, but they play dumb. Like, and and, uh, and that brings me right back to the last point. Because they Playing they play dumb. dumb because they still enjoy it. Even they enjoy the time, even if it's undefined time. Even if it ain't real, boom. You know you, what I'm saying? You hit it on the head. Yeah. So even if it's dumb and you spending time with them and you're enjoying it, you're enjoying it. So you, so you Kendrick had a line about that in that song. Um, and Kendrick had a line about that. Dig through the crates. Uh, Pastor Cal told you, and they lying to themselves. They they lying to themselves to stay happy, right? To keep from being hurt. 
So it's like you, Danny Lay also I knew because, and, and, and this is that double-edged sword, right? You fucking with a nigga, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, he got baby mamas, but he's a good father. See, one thing about the baby, everybody say the baby is a great father. Right. Nobody, take the, nobody takes that away from the right. baby. So one thing as a woman, you don't have to worry about, okay, if I do get pregnant, he will take care of me. That's he will fact. take care of this baby. Yeah. But I also think that Danny Lay misconstrued. And this is where dad will also come in and say, oh, oh, damn, baby girl, you know, fuck the man, I got pregnant. Okay, cool. He's a good dude. So he's going to take care of the baby. Right. And you, and, well, but not in the no, way that you think. I'm, I'm going to keep letting her know. She's ta- he's taking care of the baby. He's taking care of the baby. You're a by the kind of baby so I, yeah, close to saying. you. You're a byproduct not, not so of close. summer. Taking care of the baby. And I'm learning this now. And I'm sure you know this, but taking care of the baby is taking care of the mom. No, no, especially in the first year of taking care of the baby. Hold on, hold on. Especially in the first couple years. With that caveat, yes. Within the first year or two, you are responsible for the baby and her. Well, that's only, and, and I, I her, can only speak to that. And, and her, and, to, and, that, and that's still to an extent. But right. it's it's because Even of what Elder's saying. Like the, your, your attachment to the baby. Right? Yeah, it's, it's like I'm I'm an artist. I have no time to spend with this baby, mm-hmm. but you have nothing. You will need to raise this baby. You need to be in a comfortable situation, right. food, and that's what I mean. Everything you need, and, and I'm able to provide that just because, because I'm it's making. the baby. But that's but that's what so I, what but so, that's what I meant though. So you're giving the mom something, but but, I, but, it's all but I just want her to baby. be clear. Right, it's the baby. It it's not you. you. Yeah, yeah. If the baby was to wake up 18 tomorrow, right. and did not have to be in your presence. Snip. No, not even the baby wakes up eighteen tomorrow. If if the situation changes, shout out to D Wade in this situation. If the situation changes and my sister happens to come live with me and I now can't take care of my kids, give me the baby. Right. Because you don't because nothing you I've given you all this, I've given you resources, I've given you access, and you're supposed to have a career of your own already. Ain't you Danny Like like it's it's so many levels to it where I understand that is wrong for what the baby did as far as putting it all on live and all that. But I think Danny Lay has a misconstrued where this nigga showed you he's not fucking with I'm not talking about somebody who like is all, all in love with you, like Sierra and Russell and claiming you and all. Nah, this nigga was not really fucking with you. His ode to you was masterpiece. He's going to take care of you and the baby. And in the live video, he said that. Now, did he do a lot of triggering shit? Hell yeah, and, and that's he, what I don't. That was on purpose, but then yeah. that's what I don't like about it. Like, it bro, you you supposed to be childish. a boss, my nigga. I, if the baby lane for showing his baby on on uh, social media like that yeah. without her permission, like, cause yeah. I I don't even I never like my kids being posted without my permission, especially when they were young. Hey, like, hell, I asked you, can I post stuff that you post? Yeah, yeah, because I know my page is more exposed. Mm-hmm. Than yours, yeah, especially exactly. if I see you post something on, like when your son was wearing the just other mask. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm always gonna be like, yeah, let me post it exactly. You're straight. But this is the premiere of the baby. It's like she didn't want it, and then she was looking crazy as fuck. Like you really, you put her out here like yeah. a thought. But bro, that's your baby mama. That's what you I'm know saying. what I'm saying? So you can't. Somebody else said that. I think it was like Joe or something like that. Even if she was your side bitch, so even if she was whatever before. After she gave birth to your child, Joe that's said now that, yeah. your baby mom, bro. It's just a different level of respect. Shout out you, to Joe Budden. You got it. You got it. <laughs> you just bow your head. The pod father. Nigga just, <laughs> nigga just prayed to Joe Budden. Got it. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so yeah, it, it does change, man. When when somebody becomes the, your child's mom, because one day the child is going to grow up and they, they will be able to see that type of shit. And that's just, you know. So I feel Immaturity, what you're man. Immaturity. These niggas gotta grow up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it's it's wet, but also at the same time, we gotta start looking at the writing on the wall. This stuff don't be surprise behavior. Is anybody surprised that the baby did this in this room? Mm-mm. Are you surprised? I ain't gonna, I'm a I'm I am a little surprised that he would disrespect his baby mother. Am I surprised that he would disrespect a side chick? No. I, I've already saw that. But I'm surprised he disrespected her as the baby mom. And I think that's where I think he has I I I, I really I'm one of those type of people I've been listening more than what I listen to. And if you listen to the baby's music, bro, he's going through some shit mentally. Oh, absolutely. And he's going through some shit like yeah. I mean, he done killed niggas and he's going through some shit emotionally. He has a whole song that he just dropped where he's talking about how he loved his girl and he's fucking his girl. He asked his girl to be his wife and the girl says no. Mm-hmm. And he's laughing about it in the song, but bro, 
you put it in your song I because mean, lonely was another song he just dropped. He yeah. just dropped a song about his brother that killed himself. Rest right. in peace. Like it's yeah. like yeah, mentally that's that's tough. So he so he has so, a lot going on there, it, but ultimately it, he shouldn't have disrespected his baby mama. But she should have known where she was at. So the island boy put out a video. Oh, oh God, <laughs> I'm an island boy. And you need to go home, home. You bro. know, it it could be he can be doing it for attention, but it brings me point. It can make my point with this. So he was saying that, you know, he sold his soul. That's how he got famous. He sold his soul. And ever since he sold it, he said, I just ain't been happy. That's what he's saying on the live. I've been I've been happy. I've been anxiety. But he like, when you sell your soul, you got an option. You got to um, either sell your own soul or you got to sacrifice somebody you love. And he said, I ain't want to sacrifice nobody love, so I just sold my own soul. But he said, I ain't been happy. I got all this money. got all this fame now. But I ain't happy saying that to say how I'm tired of the baby. The baby said in that song, he was like, bro, how the hell you got everything? And your, your brother just killed himself. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot to go through because a lot of us think once we make the money, going back to the very beginning of this fucking podcast, money is the end all be all for this generation. And we think once we get it, we're good. No, nigga, there's work that has to be done. Work that has to be done. Yeah. And I, and I want to know, and I wish I had more context from Danny Lay because we talked about it too. Men pick up on cues. And not to say that she didn't enjoy the time and everything, but how do we, do we know if she really loved this brother? You know, like, because I understand everybody's like, oh, this happened, that happened. But like, do we know if it was love there or do we know if it was just like a fun time? And hey, you know what I'm saying? Because, bro. because like, if you got my back and you loving me and all this, because Unfortunately, he now has a situation where he's going through shit and he's famous at the same time. So you have to go through it in public, and yeah. we've seen a lot of people do it. But so if he had a show, but it is. But if he also had a show that was holding him down, and she was like, I, I, I hate the conversation sometimes because it always looks like he did her so wrong, right, right, like she right, was perfect, right. like she was perfect, right. and, and we don't know. And, and we don't and know, we don't like, know. and, we, and, and, and th- yeah. what you said is important because it's like, bro, people, everybody wants a good time right now, bro. It ain't even about a long time; it's a good time right now. And if you can show somebody a good time, then they're gonna be around. And love, I talk about this a lot too. Love is fickle. Love changes. I might love you today, and especially be in love with you today, mm-hmm. and then tomorrow, next week, next month, I might not be there. But that's why. 21 Savage, a couple other people say, I'd rather have loyalty over love. Mm-hmm. Because if we know that from the ground, from the from the this is the plan, I'm loyal to you, that shit never happens. Yeah. Cause love, that's love. That what they display just, right there, that's love. I that's just, the I that's just the seen, I just seen a clip. I seen a clip. Hold on, you said that's a love. You said what, what that happened shit? is because love is a fickle emotion, and because that's the evil side of love. You know, there's a thin line between love and hate. Oh, yeah. Is we love? Yeah. Is love? Oh yeah, that's that's the truest is, statement ever. It's which the I, same, which, it's which the I never same, understood until I got older. I heard it when I was young. Emotion. But I was like, what do you mean thin line between love and hate? It's, that doesn't make no fucking it's sense. It's the same until, emotion, yeah. the same thought process, the same energy, the same focus you put on somebody who you love. You do the same thing. If you genuinely hate that person, you do the same thing to somebody that you hate. So I'd rather have loyalty, man. Fuck that love shit. Like I want to be in love with you sometimes and enjoy that. So, but, I, but I think as a then, that, well, then that we gotta talk about the le- it's, it's the level it's the levels of the love, right? There's the agape love, and then there's the I can't remember what speaker I heard when he was breaking down all the forms of right. love. And I think there's a form of love that is fickle, but then there's I know for sure agape love is that unconditional. If I have this for you. We wouldn't even see well, that. And let me I'm, put a disclaimer. I'm a part the of the reason- community, you can't have unconditional love for anybody but your kids. Everybody's loved on conditions, especially men's. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's uh, definitely just for the kids. But I also say the reason why I'm going in like the way I'm going in is because I saw the report this morning. They back together. Like she moved back in. Right. They trying to reconcile right. because love. they're wor- they're working out for the baby. Danny Lay has to really. I I I just think this is one of those times where it's hard to tell a woman to stay in their place. But Danny Lay needs to stay in her place, meaning that right now you just had his baby, take care of his baby, mm-hmm. take care of you, and you ain't got nothing to worry about. Right, like, because right. now one thing I have, let's take it back to the plan. One thing I do know, a woman can write a plan for herself and her baby, yeah, you know, yeah. and be successful. You know, we just seen Summer Walker drop one of the greatest albums. She just did 200K, one of the uh, highest soul R&B single 
for, for a female in a long time. Yeah. And she had that plan. I just sent y'all an article breaking you know down saying? breaking down the love. She she toxic. But go ahead. Listen. No, but I'm saying she then ladies need to stick to her plan. She just needs to know her place, stick to her plan, and just know she needs to know her plan. I think that's so important. Because like, but, so, I mean not her not her plan. She needs to know, know her, her place. place. Because she to said it too. It. She said, nigga, you just nutted in me last night. Like yeah, that's wild. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like you do all this fighting on live and shit. And she's like, yeah, well, nigga, you So know, again, that's that immaturity, and that's yeah. what that's where like these young brothers ain't got no real men. Like really Man, game. This, is a, this is a whole separate pod episode right here. Right. Yeah. These brothers ain't got no real men giving you this game mm-hmm. on so I got you know. I'm just thankful, man. I'm really thankful for the way my life is set up. Like, because I got a lot of resources as it comes to, like, relational capital, uh, uh, wisdom capital, insight capital. Like, I have a lot of access. Just people I can call. And there's a lot of people that just don't have that, bro. I talk about them all the time on this podcast. But, like, to have access to a part him in your life, to have access to a part him in your life is priceless. Like that is priceless to have somebody as wise, as concerned, as supportive as a Parham, Frederick Parham is. Price. A lot of niggas ain't got that. Yeah, and and you and have been through it too. Who've been through it? But you identified the opportunity where the money wasn't attached necessarily. And I'm not speaking on his pockets, but I'm speaking on his image. Like he doesn't present himself as. I'm the most flashiest, the most money in the room type nigga. But at the same time, he got the wisdom and you identified that, which a lot of brothers don't. And I feel like there's a lot of references to the beginning because we're saying some real shit. It's just going back to that, knowing what to value. You know what I'm saying? And if the only way you can find value is in monetary ways, you're always going to miss out on priceless opportunities. But... A gym. Yeah, that was a gym. That was a gym. That's that a, was a gym. Damn, son, that's a gym. Yeah. Like, I need to drop. He snapped too. He, <laughs> he felt that shit. Yeah. Um. So yeah, man. Like so, even going to that, I feel like a lot of this is just brothers fucking up this week. Uh, football player. What's his name? Uh, Zach Stacy. Bitch ass nigga, bro. Zach Stacy. Yeah. I seen this shit. I mean, I really had too much to say outside of like. I mean, it's you have no reason to beat. A woman like I mean, bro, you are a football. So for everybody who don't know, Zach Stacy got caught on camera uh, beating his uh, baby mother in front of his five five month old child. Um, also came out that there's a twelve year old there too, um, and we saw the video. And she had multiple angles. That's the craziest thing. So she knew she was. She knew that was going. Happen. She knew. Well, it happened before. So they. Yeah. So she also said that they had been in this situation before. Um, and that day, they came for mediation mm-hmm. for the baby. Mm-hmm. Um, he has to come over. She obliged, mm-hmm. uh, which it, it, I, I hate when we put, I hate when situations happen, right? Because we already know, boom, this this is wrong. Yeah. And then in the, in the sphere of when women talk about how men talk about these issues, they always say, well, it should stop there, right? If he's this wrong, it should just stop there. Cool. All right. We can stop it there. But let me talk to the women who say they want to be protected by black men, right? Let me give you some protection. This right. is a word to wise. If this man already done beat your ass and you in mediation and he saw his kid at the mediation, he doesn't need to follow up the mediation with more time with the child. It's okay. The court has deemed you unsuitable right now to see him by himself. Yeah. And if you want to put yourself in that situation, you just did it, right? So I don't want to say she got her ass beat because I feel like he was he was going to do that to her Regardless. anytime that he right, got her alone. Right, right, right. So that was going to happen, but I just hate that she it's opened an, that it's window. It's an educational moment. It's an educational, it's an educational moment. moment to say for for those sisters that do want to be protected by us, the black men in the community, that, that, that was a red flag. And that if he's showing up, he needs to show up with somebody else that's just as responsible mm. or I need to have somebody else here with me because but that was never his intention and that's how I always tell brothers as a uh, my, my bad no, no, I always no. tell brothers as a word of advice especially when dealing with children and baby mothers once the relationship is over right and you know it, like you're not trying to be with her romantically and you know it's over brothers you have to shift that focus to only about the baby right only about the baby like yeah you might be chilling because some some women are p- cool some women are cool enough to say yeah you can come Eat dinner. Let's all just chill on some family shit. Cool. Keep it about the baby. 
And once the baby go to sleep or die down, you should leave. There's no reason to sit down and have a conversation about personal shit, about old shit, about shit that never was resolved. Oh, did you? Because that's what happened with this. The baby goes down. Did you sleep with my teammate? Did you fuck him? And they get into altercation. Brothers, keep it about the baby. And if you know you can't keep it about the baby, you you got to bring, like Mark said, bring somebody with you, get supervised visit. You have to figure out how to do that shit mentally. And it might not be easy. It might not be easy because I know there's some brothers who wanted to be with that right. woman. Right, for sure. You know what I'm saying? For and sure. she didn't want to be with you. Cool. You got to shift your focus and make you it about be, the baby, you bro. Gotta be, you got to be. And I really wish that this brother would have did that. Yeah, man. Because because it's really, to shift it back to him real quick, because he deserves all the blame. He deserves all the disrespect that he about to get. Like, he deserves the smearing because that's, a, that's the worst move in the world, bro. She's a third I, of your size. I, I knew it was bad when I watch when I cause y'all know how I can't watch shit. Mm-hmm. Like, ooh, but like when I watch the video and I see it, I'm like, man, fuck that nigga, bro. bro. Throw him nigga. under the jail, dog. Fuck well, that nigga. And, and bro. What, what I don't like when I see those videos, because like I watch those videos and, and shout out to Young Grump. If y'all don't know on YouTube, it's a, a young dude called Young Grump. He has a big following, but he breaks down uh psychoanalysis of like different films and like live films too. And um <clears throat> Like, he broke down some of this film, and it's like, you know, in some fighting situations, you can see the person snap and just go black, right? And you just see them do something. That brother, he, like I said, no matter what time he got her alone, he was going to hit her. Mm -hmm. Because the way he had the conversation, the way he caught back, when he threw her on the thing, and he tried to get like a running start to like hit her. Like, bro, and then you, he picked something up off the table. Well, that was the food. That was the food. And he, then started throwing it in throw, her face. Well, because it was a disrespectful move. Because I bought food for me, you, and my son to enjoy, and it went went sour. So this, it was all, it was, man, it was all about disrespectful. Weak man, bro. Bro, the weakest. Dog. Now, okay, back to your point. If you want a beta man, that's a beta man move. Like the emotion part. He ain't fought. He ain't fought no nigga in. 30 years if he ever fought a nigga in his life. No, bro. He, I mean, he could probably beat a nigga ass too. He's probably a bitch mentally and just got a big ass body, bro. It's a bunch of them niggas, bro. It's a bunch of niggas I know that ain't touching niggas in the street because they a bitch mentally, they, bro. No, no, they, they I be a half size. No, nah, I got to speak on this, bro. I done knocked out <laughs> niggas twice and three but you times. You hitting a woman size, in front of Mark, yo. No, 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 no. On, on me, on my mom, bro. And I got niggas that can attest to this shit, bro. Because I ain't no bitch mentally, bro. Yeah. Period. And it, it could be whoever in front of me. But if you 300 pounds, nigga, and you a bitch, you a bitch. That's no, no, a you, bitch, bro. He ain't fought no niggas in a long time. No, no, bro. I'm not, I'm not saying me, I'm not I'm not saying you're wrong. He is a bitch. He's a well, bitch. Well, but what I'm saying Excuse is, what, what I'm saying is bad, these brothers <laughs> what I'm saying is these brothers do be snapping though. Like get you a mark, girl. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, cause he, well, he, cause these brothers do be snapping, and I feel like they well, you you brought it up early, and I think you better go there. The warning signs, right? Yeah. You, you there there are certain things that give you warning signs to let you know, like okay, if a nigga got that in him. Well, you he played in the NFL, and I think shout out to Joe. He said this too. <laughs> if if the if the team demeans you incompetent, <laughs> um, it's a pop father. <laughs> I mean, fuck, fuck with us, fuck, fuck with us, Joe. Fuck Joe with us, Joe. Man, we try we try and get this deal, man. We, I'm in a bind, Nate. <laughs> Hey, this nigga stupid, dog. <laughs> you hear the, the mics dinging and donging. God damn, bro. Oh my god. Fuck with this big bro. Fuck with us, man. So what I'm what I'm saying to sister, like we had an episode. We said this episode is not for every black woman. I don't think that was the title of it. It's uh a Vashti Brittany mm-hmm. was on it. And I asked him, what does protection look like? And I asked every woman this whenever I get a chance. When we talk about what does protection look like? And then what does preventative protection look like? Because the issue is, I feel like we got a lot of Lewis Lane. (laughs) Y'all remember that episode of Spider-Man with Lewis Lane that jumped off the roof? Oh, you talking about Superman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, Not yeah. New Elaine, but no, I'm talking about Mary Jane. Mary I'm talking Jane, about Spider Man. Oh, Mary Jane. She, she literally just jumped off the roof, and he was like, "Why'd you do that?" Because you know. And she like, I just wanted to know if you were gonna, you know what I'm saying? Like, where's the preventative protection? Because some of this shit, I can look at these niggas right. based off how they acting, how they talking, 
This nigga ain't no good. This nigga has everything in him of the, all the qualities of a weak bitch ass nigga that will beat your ass. And I don't care. You can see that shit. I ain't saying it. It ain't been men that have snapped. It came out of nowhere. No, 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 no. You, you're right. You're right. It's a difference. You're right. Only reason I looked at you like that because I had to. I'm listening to it in general, but in the context of this, the reason why I look crazy is because. She ain't no sister, so I feel like those white girls they have different they they have different motives right. for fucking with people, right. fucking with niggas. Like so, to your point, you are totally right. I think in her case, you can look past some of that if he's playing in the NFL. You want to check, right? I don't know if that's true for her, but yeah. I'm saying, but, but now I'm, I'm I'm talking bigger than him. Yeah, I'm talking bigger than him. I'm just talking about people that I know personally. Right. I mean, y'all know that somebody I know that went through that. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm just like, but it was signs before. I already, but it's, it's, it's hard to explain. It's right. just, it's qualities. I can see it. It's almost how like you can look at an athlete like, but you an athlete. Right. Like, like, nah, you an <laughs> athlete, bro. <laughs> I, I, what sport you play? Yeah, it's traits. Yeah, it's like, traits. You, it's traits. Yeah. So I can look at it and go like, okay. Red flags, as the ladies like to call it. Right. Like, and, and I hate we trend shit like red flag because now it's a joke. Right. But nah, yeah, real. we should start looking at these red flags. Yeah, real. And this ain't victim blaming. This is help me help you. Now nah, that's a fact. Cause what do you? Cause most, a lot of times, you know, the sisters that want protection want us to be reactive instead of proactive. Cause when we proactive and we tell them, yo, don't do that. It's like nigga, stay out of my business. That, I'm a grown. I'm, you that's know what why I, mean? I said this advice is a form of protecting black women. Because that's why I said if you now if you want to stop it where it's wrong, cool. Don't listen no but more. But pro, if you want some protection, this is the this is pro, proactive. This is the proactive because they gonna call us after it's done and yeah. want us to come protect them. Yeah, baby. because like I mean, I ain't set up like that. Like I mean, it's, it's one or two. <laughs> it's one or two choices. I can fuck up my seventy-two page plan, right? Or I can call the man. <laughs> like it's one. Of, it's it's one or two options. So you know when folk be like, oh, he, he's a gentle giant. He would never do it to me. <laughs> like oh, my nigga, crazy. But like that should be cute yeah. mm-hmm. until it ain't cute no until more. It ain't cute no more. For real. Yeah, I yeah. Like I don't seen that shit too many times. Like on your friends playing. Oh girl, you you know your nigga crazy. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh okay. Yeah. That shit. Yeah. I, I yeah. And it's, a, it's probably a thin line there too because they like that shit. That and then I also feel like <laughs> you also have to really be like use your common sense and think about. Size, like what the fuck? This is a big ass nigga. Uh, motherfucker, if bitches. this nigga hits me, something's gonna hurt. Like, cause I feel like that. You know, women do that shit. I I grew up with plenty of women trying little niggas, thinking that oh well, cause he's little, I'm gonna bark up on well, his ass. So you know what I'm saying? We, so we're talking but, about this on a road trip, and I was like, I'm gonna be real. I don't hit women. I've never hit a woman, but but hey, okay, here's a but. I believe because I don't hit women, there's a level of tried that I get because a woman knows without a shadow of doubt I'm not gonna hit her. And but I don't know though, bro. Nah, because I no, I don't no, hit women either, nigga, and I don't no. get tried. But your demeanor has maybe it's a little question like, will he? <laughs> I'm saying there's no question from me. Mm-hmm. My personality ain't even set up on no. Like, <laughs> stupid, baby. so look, I'm saying, is there even quest? Like, you argue. I don't really argue. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't yell. I ain't. It ain't set up for that. So it's like there's no question there. So I know I've been tried. I know I've been tried more than old boy Pookie over here. <laughs> that goddamn that nigga crazy girl. Don't say nothing to him. That lyric wasn't for me. So, so that was the one thing I said. But then two, the other reason I don't hit women, I'm the, maybe if I was four to five, six inches taller. <laughs> like, I'm at the height where you hit a woman. You can't hit a woman. You have to fight a woman. <laughs> so, hey, yo, a woman hit me. If I hit a woman, she in her head. She like, nigga, I could, I could take this little yeah. nigga. <laughs> Take this nigga straight I out of the take, game. I can, look, I'm about to fight it. But look, when a big nigga do it, you're like, you know what? Mm-hmm. This nigga might hurt me. So, you know, I'm going to sit here and hold my mouth. 
I'm a, hey, look. We, we laughing about the joke. Ladies. We're not laughing at the whole situation. I mean, domestic violence is always a crazy situation. Right, but in domestic violence, goes both ways. So let's just be real. Yeah, like it, do. it, it does. I know some niggas that have been fucked up. You got two pieces in the face. <laughs> I know some niggas. I mean, to be honest, it looked like uh, what you call it, Delaney. It looked like Delaney was about to punch on the baby in the other video. Oh, Danny oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If he wasn't, if yeah, he yeah, wasn't yeah. on live, that might have happened. So uh, it still fuck say, this football player. Though. I'm saying all to say the way the way we tell brothers, and we do this all the time. I've seen plenty of homeboys look at another homeboy. They're like, "Hey, that motherfucker crazy, bro. You might need to chill on that mm-hmm. one." Like we, like we say this to our homeboys all the time. Like, yeah, yeah. bro, that, that. Like, like, like nigg- niggas be so scared for the show that niggas would do shit. Like, look, I know Shawty might be super friendly and cool, but bitch, get out of my face. Bro. Like, don't say, don't be too. Why are you so close? Don't be too friendly. Like, cause your man, yeah. I don't want nothing to happen to you. But I'm talking about. I don't bro. need nothing to drink. I'll get my own drink. That's a fact. <laughs> nah, that's a fact. Damn, damn, damn. But even on the flip side. <laughs> But on the flip side of that, when you dealing with a home but dealing with a shorter that's crazy, we yeah. telling him we ain't on the like, well, your girl crazy. Like, nah, we like, bro, you she crazy, no, bro. No, bro. I, I'm so mad that y'all niggas don't see this this is what happens when you don't be in relationships. Y'all y'all miss out on the girl shows. Bro, married at first sight, shout out to Pastor Cal. This season, goddamn, we gotta get him back, back on. Bro, this season, first of all, nobody stay together. Spoiler alert. Second of all, speaking of crazy, bro, it was a chick on there. Sorry, it's a black woman. Cra- bro, when I say crazy, to the point where, like, she's the type of crazy that grabs shit, flips shit over. I mean, she was flipping shit over on the production crew. That's what lets you know she's crazy. But what happened? She would do a crazy act. You would leave. They asked her, so what happened the next day? Oh, I went over. We had sex. Like, bro, you keep going back to the crazy place. Well, we, 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 we talked about that, but I ain't even Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but, so to that point, yeah, we might, brothers might be going through that. But I, you know what? I, we need to get a woman on. Because I want to know. See, brothers, we'll have that conversation. We'll go to another brother and be like, hey, man. Shorty seem a little crazy. Like, you might want to chill out. And he might just tell you, hey, I know it. But boy, that thing, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stay right. And as and as, and as brothers, we just be like, all right, we understand, right? But we had a conversation, like we be like, we do have a conversation. That and shit it, ain't cute. And then if it gets too out of hand to the point where we see your character changing, like okay, now her craziness is about to make you react crazy, right, right, bro. Right. Leave her alone. And you know that what I'm saying? be that's, for me, that's the for my one. partners. When I see someone doing something. When, even if they're not doing it purposely But if anybody see that you have came out of your character And they keep mm. Poking you and they keep fucking mm. Bruh Get out of that shit Get out of that shit so I bad. Get out of that yeah. shit so, so I, want, but that's why I, said I want a woman on Because I wonder how those conversations Go woman to woman When it's like girl I, met, I see your dude He look crazy You know what I'm saying yeah, You might want to dip You know what I mean Yeah Yeah, man. So, um, all in all, my thing is, you know, sister, you got to protect yourselves. You really got to. And we got to protect you, too. There's a level that we have to do as men in the community, but we also got to just start being real with ourselves, men and women. Mm -hmm. Men and women. Like, this trend of red flags, been cute, and everybody doing the thing, but Let's talk about what happens when we see the red flag. What's the process of exiting? Like, I mean, I just don't heard some crazy stuff. Like, I got a, I mean, I, I, I was recently talking to a shorty and she was just saying her dude, baby daddy, they done, but she can't get him out. Oh, he's like a snoop on baby boy. <laughs> Bruh. And, and, and the thing, so, but I asked her, I was like, are you scared he gonna hit you? Uh, I mean, like, cause now I'm like, well, well, because you know the other level, <laughs> and you know the higher level, bro. We black, 
Right. So you also want right. to get them out, but if I call the police to get them out, what well, happens? Well, this, well, this, this, the, so this the thing, and I just feel like it just be a, it, like she just too relaxed, like it's a joke. Ladies, but let then, us know if y'all would pay for a service, a get a nigga out service. We use it, pull it, <laughs> order on the app. Five to ten niggas show up, big buff niggas to show up and toss your niggas. We ain't calling the police, so he's not gonna get no record in them, but we're gonna toss him the fuck up out of there. Yeah, I don't believe in that shit. I believe in the police. <laughs> I'm gonna be real with you. I, I don't. Nah, nah, I believe I, in community. I believe in community. I believe, I believe in community. Let me tell you, community. look, if you got the if somebody call you over to get a nigga that they knew was already crazy and you get killed because you went to go do some bootleg ass community service, <laughs> bruh. I'm about to be mad as Dang, fuck at this shot. Fuck all that, bro. Yeah, that's oh, real. That's why you I look, about that. That's why proactive. <laughs> hey, that's why if you don't know, listen proactively, bro, you know, we ain't got to be reactive. Fuck all that. Like you knew this nigga had a scrap. Yeah. But it, you but, knew this nigga was crazy. Yeah. You ready to die for that pussy? But, but that's what I'm saying. I am. Now, now on that level, yeah, you call the police. <laughs> but I'm saying sometimes it be a certain level of this is just a miscommunication. I look. Hold on. Hold on. I've been paying the rent, but your name is on the goddamn lease. Bitch. Right. That's the only reason why you calling the police. Right. What about no situations? Yeah, like but, you don't need to call the police, bro. I, I don't need I'm the police. Saying, what I'm saying, that, bro, you put yourself in a position where this could happen. Damn. Damn. You gotta walk away, bro. You don't lose. You gotta eat that. And you don't lose. That's just part of being a man. I you don't take the L. Yeah, Damn. that's just part of. So it. what I'm saying is, I'm not with all this shit because it don't stop when you do that. Unfortunately, psychologically, niggas is scared of the police. Nah, they nah. not scared of your swole ass cousins. You're right. Because because so, even if they get me out now, all I got to do is come but, back around the corner. But also, the but if you are gonna do the community shit, we got to do this shit holistically. Right. How are we gonna get you out of this physically? Right. But then how are we gonna get you out of this mentally, right, sister? Right, 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 right. Because there's some shit you got to do to keep the nigga out. Bring the Panthers back. Because it ain't no nah. It, I'm just saying it ain't no reason of getting this nigga out. And then you gonna bring him back next week because you, y'all wanted he brought some food. Like, yeah. Shawty asked me to come up. She said, yeah, nobody ain't here. You just told me this nigga goddamn can't get out the house. Talking about he out of town. Mm -hmm. How I know that nigga ain't testing to see CNN. what you do when you out of town? Hey, bro, I'm nigga, not set up for that. No, nah, I feel you. That's what the sermon on the nigga had. <laughs> that happened, that's a red flag, so, nigga. You about to be in some shit. Bro. I'm not set up. I'm not that type of nigga. I feel you. I'm not that type of nigga. I'm just going to be real with you. I don't, bro, nah, dog. I feel you. So, all I'm saying is, either motherfuckers be super naive, or motherfuckers be goddamn super uh, lying about what they really going through. And I think to bring a whole random ass innocent bystander in there and get fucked up, nah, fuck that. I, I sent a white cop in there. <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> oh, Damn. <laughs> y'all seen that video of the audience on this? Y'all seen the video of the police officer where they called the police? The girl called the neighbors called the police. Oh, the police so the, the neighbor called the police, and then they came out with a gun, and the police officer ran. Mm -hmm. You ain't see that shit? I seen it. I bro, seen it. They were going down the steps. Bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, first of all, somehow she got out the house. Mm -hmm. The neighbors called the police. She got out the house. So the police were coming up the stairs, the and the woman was behind the police officer. The nigga came out with a gun, he cocked it, and the police officer ran and left her, bro. Damn. He sat in the car until the SWAT team got there. Hey, it's a bitch ass nigga, bro. <laughs> a bitch with a badge, I like to say. <laughs> a bitch with a badge. And you want me to get me, David? <laughs> Key. First of all, I said five to ten swole ass. Yeah, that's why I know. Don't put y'all goofy ass niggas on this shit. Hell nah. 
I ain't go. He gonna be trying to talk him out of it. Like, hey, bro, listen, bro. I really just went. I came over here to nah, talk. We don't talk. I mean, we'll toss him out. We gotta toss him out. No. I just don't want him coming back like Lamar. <laughs> what I'm telling you is, <laughs> that shit like a snake. Man, you just leave the whole apartment. <laughs> All right. Let this nigga have it. <laughs> this, nigga oh my God. this nigga's stupid, dog. Hey, hey, there's nothing we can do. <laughs> hey, man. I'm my brother. Look, we said it's wherever we, we love y'all. Turn me up. Put these y'all, but most importantly, we can't wait to see y'all next week. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Just Show the Podcast. I apologize to anybody that might be offended. Dang, 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 bigger one. We just talking that shit. Turn me up. Let's go. <laughs>